Welcome, this is the Apostate Prophet. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I certainly am having a fantastic day. I was a little bit late. <coughs> this time it wasn't uh, David's fault, although I blamed it on him immediately as soon as he arrived. Uh, it was my fault. For, in fact, I was looking uh, at the sky with my new telescope so I could catch the sun going to its uh, resting place at night after the sun sets so I could observe it prostrate under the throne of Allah right after it takes a bath. Unfortunately, I didn't see it. But later I will look again because Muhammad also said that Allah comes down to the nearest heaven, to the lowest heaven at night and stays there and says, Guys, pray to me, pray to me, guys, and stays there for a while, and then he goes back up again. So I'll, later, I'll, later, I will be on the watch to uh, look at that as well. Anyway, that's why I'm late. How is everybody doing? David, how are you doing? Uh, I have to point out, uh, AP, that uh, mockery does not do away with the insults that you've tossed at your fans by being late. Once again, you have dishonored your fans, you have dishonored your guest, and you have dishonored the Shaolin Temple. The what? The what? <laughs> uh, first, first of all, I have to clarify one thing. Uh, when I when I arrive late to a scheduled live stream, this is not uh, a this is not disrespectful toward my uh, toward those those people who are watching. On the contrary, I'm actually respecting them because I take into consideration that some people might join later so i want everybody to be here when i when i when i join so that nobody misses out i'm actually very considerate so there's that the shaolin temple would be proud sir wonderful wonderful mortal combat reference somebody said somebody said the shaolin temple they're pretty yeah. good at martial it, arts it's some it's some, it, it, I don't even remember. It was a Bruce Lee movie when he said something oh, yeah. like, you have disgraced yeah, yeah. my family and you've disgraced the Shaolin Temple, something like that. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Benjamin Iota said, uh, I'm here for Shaky Booty. Shaky Booty is uh, not here. Uh, you're looking at the wrong person. Hey, 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 hey I, thought, I thought of another character. I was thinking, who, who could be, a, who could be a, a nemesis for Shaky Booty? <laughs> and I was thinking... Uh, and then mom, and I was thinking, and mama, so, and, and mama's so fat. <laughs> <laughs> I have to spell it like in yeah. Arabic style, but and mama's so fat. <laughs> <laughs> that's complicated. That's, that's pretty creative, though. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, glad to see you arose from the throne. Thank you so much, Lindsay, as always. Uh, I appreciate it as well. So today what we want to do is before going on too much with uh, all the nonsensical conversations, uh, we want to go back into reviewing um, the the exchange between Muhammad Hijab and Diane Hirsi Ali that happened on um, Michaela Peterson's channel. Last time that we were here, we already went through most of it. But there was still uh, there was still some parts left, and uh, we asked. People said we should do part two, so here we are doing part two. I just started thinking about obsequious again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's 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 what he called Ayan Hershey obsequious, and, and then and then Michaela was like, oh, okay, uh, yeah. So. You know what she is? You know what she is? I got thesaurus. <laughs> thesaurus.com. Thesaurus.com. <laughs> 
I wonder if he carries it with him all the time. <laughs> you should, hey, hey, you should make a video uh, learning your SAT vocabulary with Muhammad Hijab. And uh, <laughs> 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 he, it's, he honestly probably tries to learn, uh, you know, uh, words that are not in use anymore, words that are considered advanced to the general population, <laughs> just so he can sound smart. Here you go. Hey. He, he has his obsession, you know. Here you go, here you go. And, and let me tell you, let me tell you what I think about, let me tell you what I think about the apostate prophet. Hmm. Yes, I'll break it down for you. Listen, listen here. The the conglomeration of the hypotenuse will differentiate <laughs> the parallelogram of the apostate prophet. And any time the, the consequency doesn't emulate the ordinary effervescence, and moreover, the eccentricity <laughs> of the aggregation will transubstantiate his arguments. Any time the perspicacity of the consequences, ha! I rest my airtight case. You've been put in your face. You're finished, boy. Finish. Yeah. yeah. And you know where the quality in this speech is that you have just given? What makes you so amazing and so credible and so awesome and superior is the fact that nobody just understood what you said. This makes you this makes you great. You can't refute it. You can't refute it, can you boy? <laughs> this makes you great. That is the that that, that, that is the measuring uh thing, whatever. You can Secret. be able to seek this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's nice. Nobody understands you, and that's that's that makes it great, fantastic. People really think like that. It's it's amazing. Uh, the, I mean, the 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 cherry on top of the ice cream sundae there was uh, was was Michaela just laughing at it. Like, <laughs> like did, did he seriously just use that word? <laughs> Wait a minute. Maybe maybe we can I can get back to that. It was funny. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to look for that right now. So um, we want to look at that video once again. Once again. Let's see. Uh, I would prefer if I could make my window look a little bit better here, but whatever. I, I have no idea where we were, where we were last time that we went through that, but I guess. Well, uh I haven't I haven't heard anything except what you put on there. So if you play something and I haven't heard it, then we haven't covered it. Good point. By the way, um, I might cough or uh, occasionally and sound a little bit weird. That's because uh, the whole family is uh, sick right now. I woke up choking and. Uh, it's Gabriel, uh, Angel Gabriel. Got you. <laughs> my kids are See? vomiting through the day so it's hey, just it's, it's a little hey, don't you remember that uh that uh ali dawa prayed for us to get diseases so oh yeah that's probably it alhamdulillah yes. alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. how yeah. did how did how did we know if islam is not true huh we prayed for <laughs> allah to give you diseases and here you are just just a year or two later and you get the you get a cold <laughs> <laughs> oh, David, yeah, uh, you corrupted my perception of Ali Dawa so much with that voice that nowadays when I think of Ali Dawa, I imagine him speaking with your voice instead of with his own voice. You see, Allah <laughs> did hear the Mubahala. It's the Mubahala curse on you. Oh my God. That's, that's hilarious. Get my grapes. <laughs> and then you have where's my bananas uh there was this one funny point during the debate when i brought up when i said uh bring bring research papers bring some you know scientific proof or something and he's like uh oh, what research papers research papers. Bring, bring me bananas or something like that that was a perfect <laughs> summary of the debate you know he responds to that to research papers with oh what is research papers where are my bananas like that's how he responds no that's funny because uh that's i mean such a he, level. he's the bigly bigly of dawa and then his partner is <laughs> the grape ape <laughs> all right the father and the son and the holy spirit it's no coincidence the reason why you find that in Does the sound and okay here. so we also believe in the prophet muhammad which is the final and uh last prophet which was required in order to fix these issues it is the last prophet muhammad in the actions of the prophet muhammad to give no organizations we like in. isis and al-qaeda permission moral permission to use various forms of violence including terrorism Ooh, harsh words is violence inherent to islam okay we did we right. talk about this so violence is inherent to the human condition 
Vi violence is inherent to the human condition. <laughs> it's inherent to human beings. We've seen it in history. And there's nothing uh, inherent about violence in Islam. In fact, violence is instrumental in the Islamic discourse. It's instrumental, i.e. it's a means to an end and not an end itself. Because if you look at the verses which re refer to violence, that its permission has been given to those who can fight in the, uh, in the way of God because they have been oppressed. It's couched in language of justification. He knows better. If it's couched in language of justification, liar. That the original condition is not fighting. That, that makes no sense. Go ahead. You wanted to say something. I guess. Oh, he's, he, he has to know he's lying here. I mean, your, your average Muslim on the, on the street might believe something along these lines. But at first, Muslims weren't allowed to fight at all. Then once their numbers grew, then they were given permission to fight. And that's where he's going now. You see, it says we're given permission to fight. It's couched in the language of permission and self-defense and so on. Yeah, that would be lovely if, if those were the final revelations uh, or if the Quran did not have this doctrine of abrogation. Uh -huh. But the final marching orders were Surah 9, and that's where you get language that isn't couched in this language of permission and isn't couched in language of self-defense. Fight those who do not believe in Allah. That is yeah. a call for violence. And he says, well, you know, it's, it's not just violence for itself. Right. It's you, you're fighting and subjugating the Jews and Christians in order to get them to pay you jizya, tribute money, and acknowledgement of their inferiority in order to enrich the Muslim community. And so, yeah, it's the biggest money-making scheme in history. It's the exact same thing that the mafia does. Hey, give us money if you want to be safe. You know what's very funny? What? Um, I remember I made a video in the, in the past about the jizya and about how... Uh, you know, um, the whole lie that there is no compulsion in religion and Islam is uh, just defensive and all that. Uh, I made a video about that. And um, this guy, Farid Response, originally made a response to one of those videos. I don't know which one it was. I'm kind of simultaneously looking for that. But he made a response to that. And he made a response to a video in which I basically say that, uh, you know, according to the fundamental Islamic uh, rules on warfare, uh, the Muslims are supposed to uh, you know, approach the non the non-Muslims, and then uh, you know, give them several options. Like uh, either you accept Islam, you bec you uh, become our subjects and pay the jizya, or you become uh, or, or you die, you fight and die. You know, and and then uh, and, and then there are of course some other implied options, like uh, such as uh, fleeing or becoming slaves and all that. Under that video. Muhammad Hijab actually made a comment back then, this was maybe a year ago or two ago, uh, where he basically mocks my explanation of the issue and approves of the whole idea of fighting the enemies of Islam uh, if they do not convert to Islam. And he says, he says uh, the apostate should decide uh, because he says that people have no choice. But then he also says that, that they have the choice to uh, to convert, to die, or to become subjects. So he was basically approvingly making fun of the great fact that, well, non-Muslims can choose. They can simply choose to become our subjects or to die. You know, <laughs> He was basically making fun of that because he knows very well that I was showing Quran chapter 9, verse 29, which obviously very clearly says, explicitly says, that you should fight those who do not believe in Allah and don't adopt the religion of truth from uh, the Muslims. It, it says fight those who do not believe. It doesn't say fight those who oppress you. It doesn't say fight this or that. It, it says directly here in chapter 9, verse 29 fight those who do not believe in Allah or in the last day and who do not consider unlawful what Allah and his messenger have made unlawful and who do not adopt the religion of truth from those who were given the scripture so those who were given the scripture referring to Christians and Jews if they do not adopt the true religion they are also to be fought until they give the jizya willingly while they are humbled so if they do not convert to Islam if they do not believe in your religion you are supposed to fight and subjugate them violently 
uh, unless, of course, they accept beforehand to become subjects of the Muslims and to pay protection money, uh, you know, in return for being kept alive. This is part of Islam. This is a fundamental part of Islam. He knows this. He approves of this. And he is obviously uh, lying about this. Oh, uh, absolutely lying. And uh, as I pointed out, there are plenty of Muslims in the world who would think that uh that you know if you read this in context you'd find out they've been trained to use this context defense well in context uh, it refers to self-defense and that's absolute nonsense if you go to the historical context um this is what led muhammad to want to go out and fight the romans in order to obey allah's command to uh to fight the jews and the christians until they pay the jizya Romans didn't care about the Arabian desert. And so they didn't even show up to the battle when Muhammad came up uh, to Talba and wanted to fight. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there are plenty of Muslims who would think, oh, well, if you just read the context, you'll find out that these Jews and Christians were uh, attacking the Muslims. All you have to do is all you have to do is read the next couple of verses. So you've got Surah 929, fight those who do not believe. And then the, the question that would arise is, why are we fighting Jews and Christians We've said all along that these are the people of the book. Why are why are we why are we going to fight and subjugate them and make them pay the jizya? Next verse: the Jews call Ezra the son of Allah, and the Christians call Christ the son of Allah. That is a saying from their mouth. In this, they but imitate what the unbelievers of old used to say: God's curse be on them, how they are deluded away from the truth. So the justification for fighting Jews and Christians is their theology. It's their mm -hmm. theology and specifically what they're saying about God. So notice it's fight those who do not believe the right <clears throat> things. And then when it gives examples of what they've done, of what they do that justifies it, it's, it's their beliefs and things they say. And you could go to the very next verse in case you're saying, well, maybe the next verse says, oh, yeah, and they're attacking you. Um, they take their priests. I'll just read your version on the screen. They have taken their scholars and monks as lords besides Allah, and also the Messiah, the son of Mary. And they were not commanded except to worship one God. There is no deity except him. Exalted is he above whatever they associate with him. Is there one word here about Jews and Christians coming and attacking the Muslims, or is the justification for attacking Jews and Christians all our theology and our basic religious practices? Let's be safe, AP. Go to the next verse. We don't we don't we, we don't want anyone to get the wrong idea here. They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths. Did you mouths. catch that? Is it with swords? <laughs> They're trying to extinguish the light of Allah with swords by coming out with horses and swords and spears to attack you. No, it's about what we say. We're saying that Jesus is Lord and Jews are supposedly saying Ezra is the son of God, which no Jew has ever said as far as we know. But uh, the, it, 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 the Quran cannot be any clearer. It's not clearer on anything in the history of the Quran as it is here. It's like Allah is saying, how can I be any more clear to you that I'm talking about what they say and what they believe as the justification for fighting them? They want to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, but Allah refuses except to perfect his light, although the disbelievers dislike it. And finally, the next verse <laughs> is the end of the passage. Yep. <clears throat> it is he, Allah, who has sent his... So notice, uh, Allah, they try to extinguish the light of Allah with their mouths, with their mouths by what we say, but Allah is not going to allow us to do it. <laughs> now notice, he's not going to allow us to continue speaking and saying blasphemous things that undermine Allah. So what's he going to do about it? How is he going to stop it? It is he who has sent his messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to manifest it over all religion, although they who associate others with Allah dislike it. Those who associate others with Allah. Mm -hmm. uh, notice uh, Surah 9, verse 30, which we just read. Christians and Jews are both guilty of this, and that's the justification for fighting us. So Allah sent Muhammad, according to this verse, Allah sent Muhammad to silence us, re reduce us, to a state of dimitude where we're not going to go around uh, preaching and extinguishing the light of Allah with our mouths. Perfectly clear. Does hijab know this? Yes. Why is he saying otherwise? Well, you can't go <coughs> onto a podcast. Um, if your goal on going on the podcast is to sell Islam to some new uh, viewers, new listeners, you, you can't you can't say what you really believe. Uh, like that's why hijab doesn't come on there and say, and I think you Western women deep down, you want to be, you want to be raped. 
You want it. You want it. You want big strong guys coming around and take conquering you and raping you. That's what you want. AP, why don't you go kill yourself? Kill yourself, AP. Now, you can't go around golden showers. Golden showers. He, he, he can't he can't go around saying that stuff and so oh yeah self-defense you believe in self-defense don't you that's what we believe ha <laughs> ha it's a quran yeah why, why, why didn't he why didn't he tell uh michaela for example hey there's nothing wrong in your worldview with uh committing suicide so why don't you kill yourself why didn't you say that you know mm -hmm. it should, 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 should completely make sense i mean it's completely compatible with his ideas but and, hey, and, uh, and 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 he specifically links it to like depression and stuff like that hey, yeah, you're just gonna yeah. be depressed why don't you kill yourself well, jordan peterson has battled with uh depression all his life and so yeah yeah major depression recently a lot of anxiety he had he needed a uh, very special treatment for all of these things like by by muhammad hijab's logic since uh life is more suffering more pain than pleasure to him he should kill himself that's muhammad hijab's logic i i even made a video basically just about that should jordan peterson kill himself based on muhammad hijab's logic of and course so, so it would never come up we can already see the pattern here that the pattern for pretty much all this year is going to be hijab trying to get on you know the podcasts of people who have big followings try to spin islam to them and then us coming in and exposing all the lies later on. That's what it seems like this year is going to be. Yeah. Lindsay Murray said Michaela should have been tougher on him. I disagree. I think, uh, with all due respect, I think Michaela actually did a, did a very good job. Uh, she's not very familiar with Islam. She tries to have a platform where she is um, neutral and understanding as much as possible, where she lets the people speak. Uh, despite that, um, yeah, of course, she could have stopped him when he got too personal. Uh, she didn't, but uh, she did show her reaction. She reacted afterwards. She attached uh, a disclaimer to the beginning of her of the podcast episode and expressed how she's distressed by this podcast. And it seems that uh, Muhammad Hijab's presence and his words have really had an impact on how she perceives people like him and Islamic apologetics in general. And we will hear more about that. Soon. Yeah. And, and I have to say, I mean, I haven't, uh, the, based on the comments I've seen of people sending me comments and stuff like that and the comments I've, I've seen on Twitter and so on, it looks like Muhammad Hijab's fans generally thought, oh, great job because, you know, they want someone thumping their chest and attacking Ayan Hirsi Ali. Uh, almost pretty much everyone else says, gosh, this is that was that's who muslims got to to defend that's their guy oh my goodness is this is this what islam really is oh my goodness i had no idea and so uh yeah and, and in general I, i'm in favor of the in favor of the long game right i mean that interaction between michaela and hijab is not is not the end of the road that's like a, a beginning of something else that's starting right there and so she'll have opportunities in the future to uh uh, to respond to what was said there and it will influence her future interactions and her future interviews and things like that. And, uh, and then we get an awesome opportunity to come in there, but you definitely want people to get an accurate picture of what a modern champion of Dawah is really like. Yeah. Uh, Cause that tells you about something that tells you something about the followers and what they like. I, I saw, I saw like three types of responses to the, to the podcast episode, I would say, if I could uh, summarize them and categorize them. One of them uh, was um, the vast majority of people who are Muslim followers of Muhammad Hijab. They started commenting from the second the podcast was published. They don't care about the content at all. They didn't see the content. They are simply there to say, Muhammad, brother Muhammad Hijab did a fantastic job, uh, curse Ayan Ali, and so on. That, that's and, the majority and, and, of the comments. And that's coordinated. They're coordinating. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Muhammad Hijab uh, explicitly instructed people beforehand, weeks before, several times to do that, you know, basically. Uh, um, then there is the second type, which are Muslims who did watch it and who feel proud of Muhammad Hijab doing, uh, you know, doing what he did. And then, um, and, and those two are the vast majority of comments, I would say. It's um, very few others actually <clears throat> watched it. Then there are those who... Um, are foreign to this whole issue, who are non-Muslims, who did watch it and who just feel very uh, annoyed and sad and frustrated and just shocked about this whole thing. And they have left comments saying things like, 
wow, this guy Mohammed Hijab is really a terrible person, really a horrible speaker. And what what kind of a person goes after somebody, per, uh, you know, personally uh, in, in such a way? So people had a very bad reaction. People who are actually relevant to this discussion, Muslims. Nobody cares what Muslims think about this conversation. Let's be very honest. Muslims mostly will have a good response to this. This shouldn't be for Muslims. Muhammad Hijab goes on there in order to influence the public discourse and speak to non-Muslims, to address them, to make Islam more familiar to non-Muslims. And the reactions from non-Muslims are overwhelmingly negative to this, uh, to Muhammad Hijab. And that, I want to say, is fantastic. It's great. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Well done, Muhammad Hijab. Good yes. job. As far as I'm content, as far as I'm <clears> concerned, <throat> we cannot give Muhammad Hijab enough exposure. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, who, every big person out there, um, my goodness, get get Muhammad Hijab on your podcast. Ask him, ask him some good questions. Pit him against someone he's going to flip out on and start looking up, you know, thesaurus words and stuff like that, and just just let him keep embarrassing the religion yeah. and just you just sit back and wa watch the show and it's it's going to crumble, man. Maybe next time they should invite uh, Ali Dawa as the most popular. Oh Muslim. yeah, Muslim. get Ali <laughs> Dawa in there, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Michaela, <laughs> someone send this to Michaela. Please have Ali Dawa on your podcast and uh, get you know don't get don't don't. Don't set him up with someone who can, you know, crush him because, you know, he's I, I, as far as I can tell, he has no actual debate experience. Get get someone that, that he can really just heap insults and abuse on and who's, Actually, not, you know what? And who's not even going to fight back. In my opinion, I think the best thing to do, the best next step. Uh, this is my message to both Jordan Peterson and Michaela Peterson. Please. Get Daniel Hikikichu on. Oh my goodness! And ask him about. You're getting the, you're getting you're putting together the dream team now. You're putting together the dream team of Islamic Dawa right now. This Please awesome. invite Daniel Hikikichu, dear Doctor Jordan Peterson. Invite Daniel Hikikichu and let him speak about social issues and talk about how much Islam is compatible with and, your and, society. And even better, get Ali Dawa on there. Again, I mean, get Ali Dawa on there, then get Muhammad Hijab on there again, and then bring Daniel Hakikachu on there to correct <laughs> them and show how they're watering everything down. And <laughs> that'd be, that'd be oh, man, that will be amazing. That's the dream team. Yeah. So, um, what needs to be highlighted here once more, uh, just to get back to that? Uh, this should be known. Look, um, many Muslim apologists uh, nowadays want to present this idea that is that violence is not inherent to Islam that violence is not you know at, at the core at the fundamentals of Islam that this is just you know a reaction and all that I'm sorry it couldn't be clearer it is clear as day people should know this people should understand this people should be familiar with this it is clear as day you can see it right here on the screen in the Quran when you open the book to Quran chapter 9 verse 29 you can read the context the earliest interpretations of this by the most respected Islamic scholars. Islam, the Quran directly instructs subjugating and ap applying violence against other religious groups. This is inherent to Islam. There is no way around this. The Quran instructs violence and segregation and subjugation against other religious groups, including Jews and Christians. This is not a reaction, not a response, not something uh, extraordinary that is not part of the fundamentals of Islam. This is Islam. Islam works this way. Islam is not meant to be peaceful. Islam is meant to be a supremacy which subjugates all the others. This is clear as day. People need to know this. Please know this. Please hear this. See this. Please remember this. Please tell others about this. This is Islam. It's the Quran. Just wanted to let that out. Yeah, anyway, so now we can get back to talking about uh, the podcast again. All right. It's the original condition. That's not fighting. It's instrumental. It's a means to an end. Yeah, sure. Since violence is inherent to the human condition and history has told this story, then we need to be as violent as possible. Is it limits the human impotence, uh, impetus? <laughs> <the> human <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't want to laugh about somebody misspeaking with it. Let's just. Uh, that's a that's a that's a perfect example. Of, uh, 
you can make a video on on Freudian slips. <laughs> That's your example right there. That just came out of nowhere. And so when we think about, <laughs> if we go back to the golden showers, I mean, golden <laughs> age of Islam. <laughs> Oh boy, it just totally got me by surprise. <laughs> oh boy. Let me spank my opponent. I mean, speak <laughs> my opponent, Ion Hersia. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh boy. Oh, All right. I'm an impetus for belligerence, you see. How does it do it? It does, it limits the human impetus for belligerence by giving. <laughs> <laughs> it limits the human <laughs> impotence for golden showers. Why does he do that thing? He it loses limits his breath. And impotence and he, like he can't stop. <laughs> 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 you gotta play. You gotta oh, yeah. play that again. That was funny. I, yeah, I have no idea what just happened. And, and the emphasis on the S is just hilarious. Does anyway. uh, it do it? The human impetus for belligerence. You see, how does it do it? It does. It limits the human impetus for belligerence <laughs> by means <laughs> of the whole theory of itself. It limits you the human impetus for up. belligerence. <laughs> Why am I talking like <laughs> this? It's not how I. <laughs> I don't think I can get through this, man. It's, just, it's hilarious. Trees, the prophet told us, do not kill women. He told us, it wasn't for her to be killed. Do not kill old people, he said. Do not kill, uh, you know, uh, the, the monks. Do not go into these uh, places. In the Quran, it says that fighting happens so that, you know, uh, so that you're jizzy. Yeah. That places of worship should not be harmed, and so on. These things. What? What? I'm sorry to say this, but what a horrible argument! I hear this all the time, and I just can't stop thinking how dumb this actually is. And 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 people keep resorting to these arguments as uh, you know, as, as a good objection to the idea that islam is violent or inherently violent and then they say things like the prophet muhammad forbid the killing of old people i mean it really is that the argument here man is is that really the issue here i mean when i now go when i go out and say hey guys fight everybody take the world over conquer whatever you see and impose your religion on them but hey when you when you fight don't massacre children don't yeah. kill babies. Do, and, do you think this is a good argument to point out that my religion is my ideas are peaceful? No, and and I, I mean if you <laughs> if you if you think about like like he started with trees, right? Oh, we we don't we don't kill the trees. There was a reason. There aren't a lot of trees in Arabia, and so yeah. it was regrettable. It was regrettable. You even see that. You even see that when they when they were really mad when they had to cut down some palm trees um, when they were fighting the Jews because they don't want to cut down the few trees they had. They're very very valuable, right? It's, it's not it's not like other places where you have forests and so on. The uh, trees are pretty sparse around where where they were, so don't cut down the trees unless you you really need to. The women and the children and the old people. The women are your sex slaves and the children are your slaves and the, the 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 female children are your sex slaves and the old people are all your slaves why are you why are you killing all the war booty yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely and, and and there's also i mean to be very fair uh, of course of course the issue is um one one of the main issues is that uh, when you fight the other side you are supposed to <clears throat> defeat them and uh you know kill them and uh you are supposed to take their non-combatant members like the women as uh, servants and do something useful with them. Don't waste them. Don't throw them, throw them in the trash. There is that aspect, of course. But, um, I mean, to, to be honest, uh, it is it is reasonable and not a sign of, uh, you know, complete peacefulness and a peaceful attitude to say, hey, guys, you know, we will conquer the world. We will conquer everybody. 
but make sure not to kill the children, not to drown babies, not to, I don't know, uh, torture old people and so on. Make sure not to do that. This is something that you do not say because you are so peaceful and so loving. It is something that you say for for, for stability. Nobody wants to accept your, uh, you know, to adopt your ideology after a certain time in human civilization, in human development, uh, which advocates for... The, the brutal torture and ex extermination of all kinds of uh, people, including non-combatant weak people who are not capable of anything. Some primitive cultures might have started out that way. For example, the, the Mongols, um, according to certain early reports, did terrible things. But as soon as they started mingling with others, they established certain rules of warfare because... Uh, Despite the fact that they don't really care about the feelings of others, they have to acknowledge the fact that in order to establish, uh, you know, controlled, peaceful, tranquil societies, which will accept them, you have to make sure not to terrorize your own population and your own people. Otherwise, you will not get anywhere. This is not a good argument to present, uh, to, to argue that your religion or your ideology is peaceful. It's, it's stupid. As said, I can say, guys, follow me take up your weapons and conquer the entire world, subjugate everybody and everything that you see, spread my ideology everywhere. But you know what? Don't uh, senselessly torture people. Don't, uh, you know, create big bloodbaths. Don't kill uh, little babies. That doesn't mean I'm peaceful. That means I am being reasonable within my violent, intolerant ideology, which uh, tells you to conquer the world. That's not, a, that's not an argument, man. Yeah, and going back to like the uh, you know the mafia comparison, if 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 they could actually you know just completely have their way and didn't have to worry about uh, police interfering with them and getting arrested and stuff like that, I mean, they're not going to go around killing old people just to kill old people and stuff like that. <laughs> they're yeah, going yeah. to make sure everyone is under their control and everyone is paying them money and everyone is, is subjugated to them and. And uh, and notice, therefore, therefore, it's good and wonderful, according to hijab. Very, yeah, yeah. very strange uh, reasoning. By the way, a little side note: I keep seeing messages pop up to telling me to watch uh, <coughs> Kashmir files. Have you seen this? Have you been getting messages telling you? To I watch have it? no clue. I've kind of dis distanced myself from all the political turmoil that's going on in the Indian subcontinent a while ago, and I'm not sorry for that. I am sorry for also not. Pretty racist. All right, go ahead. <laughs> No, nothing to do with that. It's just all uh, a giant mess, and I just don't want to, you know. I want to stay out of something that I feel like I don't uh, know enough about and that I don't want to just simply get involved with. Anti-Hindu extremist AP uh, <laughs> just commented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny, funny, funny. Uh, I wanted to say something. Oh, yeah, there were some, some, some super chats. Somebody made a... Some people made some big super chats here, but uh, we will go on. I just want to. I just want to have Mohammed Tijab's very peaceful face here on here on the screen a little bit longer before we. Oh, by the way, there is a there is a hadith in which Muhammad did say when asked about um, about people who die about about children and women who die during the raids. Yeah, who cares? They're right, right. Right, correct me if I'm wrong. It was about uh, the Muslims raid the polytheists or or their opponents, and during the raids, Night women raids. and children die. And when when they when his people asked Muhammad, uh, you know, what about the women and children who died? Muhammad says, as a response to that, they are of them. You know? Yeah, they're yeah they're from they're from them, meaning they're yeah. polytheists. So uh, yeah, don't bother. No, they're just yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're don't don't worry too much about. It. He also did that with an old person where where uh, an old guy was saying, hey, "I don't believe in you" and stuff like that, and. Uh, uh one of Muhammad, one as muhammad is saying hey you know just just let that guy go and stuff one of his followers uh kills the dude and there's it's fine he doesn't really care <laughs> it's, it's more like it's more like a a loose guideline <laughs> oh yeah he says something like nobody will care about him or um, something like that right uh no, something will butt there. That, that that that's with uh that's with Asma bint Marwan okay, okay. when the guy was worried. Hey, I just killed a woman. You know, I had to I had to pull I had to pull her nursing baby off of her to stab her to death, and I'm feeling bad about it. And he says two two goats won't butt their heads over her. Um, but then there's Abu Afek. I mean, he was 120 years old, and they I mean they killed him. So it's not these aren't these aren't uh, blanket rules against killing 
old people. It's, hey, if there's an old person minding his own business and not doing anything, you don't run up to the old person and kill him. Alhamdulillah, it's a religion of peace. What the heck, man? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Quickly, I uh, wanted to share this. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit sick. Uh, because of the prayer that Allahwa made upon me. <laughs> this is the uh, proof. The proof. <laughs> so he, here's what we were talking about. According to this report, there are several of these. Um, after a, a night raid, uh, what uh, did they say to, to to Prophet Muhammad? What about the children of the polytheists killed by the cavalry during the night raid? He said they are from them. That's his response. So uh, during the night raid against the polytheists, uh, several. Women and children are killed, and when Muhammad, when they ask Muhammad, he just says, "Oh, they are from them." You know, he doesn't say, "Hey, this is this is chaotic. This is horrendous. Don't ever do that. Be very careful." No, he says, "Hey, I don't care. They are yeah. from the polytheists." Yeah. So it's uh, it's it's uh, it's hey, don't go, don't go out targeting children for murder. But if you kill some, don't worry about it too much. Yeah. But you shouldn't try. <laughs> They're yeah. your slaves. They're your slaves, right? They're the ones you're enslaving afterwards. And yeah. the little girls are the ones you're taking back to your tent. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like you go somewhere and you accidentally damage uh, some goods. And then you're like, oh, no, why did you break those glasses? We needed them. Or why did you break those 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 valuable things? We needed them. We were going to use them. That's basically it. Are mentioned in the Quran. It only takes seconds to look at it. It's not It's an open I secret. Agree. Unfortunately, the Quranic <laughs> discourse has been defamed and distorted, misappropriated, <laughs> contextually understood by academic charlatans. Discombobulated. Who I will not mention because we know who we're talking about, who has not, who doesn't even know, listen, Michaela, she doesn't even know the difference between a verse of the Quran and a hadith of the Prophet as mentioned in one of her uh, books in, I think, uh, page number 77 in the book Infidel or 301, actually, in, in the book Infidel, she mentions that uh, that Surah Al-Fatiha is a verse or something like this, or that the uh, there's a hadith and she mentions a hadith and she, she, she thinks it's the Quran. She doesn't even know what's the Quran and what's the hadith. If she doesn't know what's the Quran and the hadith, she doesn't even know how to differentiate between the book. An eight-year-old can do that. This individual, if we listen to people like this, who inspire terrorism, like for Anders Berwick, hey, hey, pause, pause who mentions her by name. Yes. <laughs> I'm saying because uh, I see Muslims confuse this all the time. They'll, they'll yeah. quote something from a from a hadith and and think it's in the Quran or something like that. And but but uh, the last video I made, uh, fortunately, I I had uploaded it. When you get banned, you're not allowed to upload. But if you've already got a video that's already been uploaded, it can still stay there. So I got I got banned for uh for seven days. Totally totally uh, bogus thing. Uh, where yeah, they they're, they're, they've got bots and they they all suck. But uh. The video is about uh, what's his name, Sajid. Sajid actually quoting a Quran verse that he attributes to Muhammad. According to the Muslim sources, this was a Quran verse, and Muslims will say it was it was abrogated or something like that. But the point is, this isn't this isn't a a teaching of Muhammad. It's it's a it's a Quran verse, and the sources make it sound like it was just lost and forgotten, and they couldn't get it couldn't get it right. But in order to justify that, Muslims will say it's abrogated, and then they'll say. Uh, uh, They'll, so they'll say, you know, that, that, that's an abrogated teaching, but Sajid thinks it's a it's just a nice quote from Muhammad. And so following hijab here, ah, you can't tell the difference between a hadith, a, a saying of Muhammad, and a quote from the Quran, an abrogated quote from the Quran. And therefore, you should just never listen to what this guy says, because an eight-year-old could tell the difference between those two things. <laughs> didn't he just say the book, uh, didn't he just talk about the book Infidel? Was, was it, or was it about heretic? No, he said, he said yeah. Infidel. Hadith. She doesn't even know how to French. And he said page 301 for uh, something. Hadith. If she doesn't know what's the Quran, is a verse or something. She doesn't even know, listen, Michaela, she doesn't even know the difference between a verse of the Quran and a hadith of the Prophet, as mentioned in one of her uh, books, in I think uh, page number 77 in the book Infidel, or 301, actually, in, in the book Infidel. She mentions that, uh, that Surah al Fatiha is a verse or something like this, or that the uh, there's a hadith and she mentions a hadith and she, she, she thinks it's the Quran. She doesn't even know what's the Quran and what's the hadith. 
If she doesn't know what's the Quran and the Hadith, she doesn't even know. I don't know what he's talking about. Maybe, I, maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I'm looking at page 301 in her book Infidel right now, and there is no quotation of any and, verse or Hadith at all. So. And, and what I mean, what he's saying here is completely idiotic, right? He's saying so. Notice, best case scenario, she confused a Hadith with the Quran at some point, right? Uh -huh. Therefore, you should never trust her again. I mean, isn't this a guy? Allah prays for Muhammad, not to Muhammad. This is Elijah means God is with us, right? I mean, if, if you just said, hell, what are these guys' mistakes? You could line up all sorts of mistakes that this guy said. Would Muhammad Hijab therefore say, since I made a mistake there, I am completely unreliable and should never be trusted again? Of course yeah. not. It's you should trust what I'm saying in spite of mistakes I've made <clears throat> in the past. And I mean, infidel that's like 20 years ago man it's like 20 years ago you're gonna say she made a mistake 20 years ago and therefore <laughs> uh, dismiss everything she says from now on they well, what, what's hilarious is, is they it's only it's apply even, this to others they never apply this to themselves it's not even just one example D during the debate with you he uh he he proudly said uh i knew i would have to give you an arabic lesson today and then he said uh it says allah prays for muhammad not to muhammad mm -hmm. <laughs> which was very dumb that was a huge mistake how can you trust somebody who says something so dumb you know and then uh the, the second thing he said uh he also said i need to also give you a hebrew lesson and then didn't he say that elijah means uh mean means god god with us yeah uh, i just gave that example you weren't listening to me you were looking up something while i said that did you give both of them yes I, oh, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I just thought it was funny if you're going to repeat the same. No, I, I, caught, I caught only one. I'm sorry. I was looking at that. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and so, yeah, it's so, uh, yeah, I mean, and I, I mean, I don't even watch hijab videos unless we're, we're watching them here. But I mean, if you line up the number of mistakes he makes, not, not according to me, I mean, you got Muslims who will call him out for saying the wrong thing. Oh, you know, uh, apostates, we could just uh, we could just exile apostates and Muslims will jump on them and say, you don't know what you're talking about. That's not what Muhammad said. That's not that's not what the scholar you're citing said. They'll jump all over him for all his, all the mistakes he makes. Would he ever say, therefore, you don't listen to this guy anymore. You can't trust him. No. Why is he why is he applying that to uh, to Ayan Hirsi Ali? Hey, hold on. I want to I want to uh, give you a very nice gift uh, just since we're talking about this. Uh, you know, I had a. Um, I had my interview with uh, Bart Ehrman, and I took the opportunity to also <laughs> ask him a question that was uh, completely unrelated to uh, to Jesus. I asked him what Elijah means, and I want to I want to give this as a gift to uh, Muhammad Hijab here. Wait here. What's over here? Can you hear this? The topic completely off topic but you mentioned elijah uh can you briefly tell me uh what the meaning of elijah in hebrew is <laughs> i should know that right <laughs> <laughs> uh, well el and ellie means my god uh -huh. means yahweh so my god is yahweh i guess yeah so, so oh, the name <laughs> <laughs> years. <laughs> wow. it, it's something that you would not really think about because it's just it's just a name but uh, I think it's very important within the Islamic context when I analyze Islam because Islam doesn't ever have the name Yahweh for God whereas yeah. this is very dom prominent in uh, the Hebrew Bible and Elijah's name is very blatantly my God is Yahweh so this yeah, is something yeah, that yeah, I'm very right, interested yeah. uh, glad I remember Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> I'm glad I did. <laughs> he, he 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 seems like he'd just be like fun to hang around with, doesn't he? I I love the guy. I know, he's I... always laughing, right? Because if you just look at like <laughs> pictures of him, like if you if you're looking for a picture of Bart Ehrman, uh, and you've just read articles or books by him, he sounds like a real serious, like intense yeah. guy, and his pictures are all he's looking really serious. And then when you actually hear him talk, he's just cracking up laughing the entire time. Yeah, I, I listened to um, a huge series of lectures of him before. Uh, and uh, although he does add a few jokes here and there, it, it just sounds totally serious. But now that I talked to him twice, I'm just, I don't know, he's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, but, but, notice, but notice, I mean, following his, I mean, following Hijab's reasoning, we should never listen. This guy makes so many mistakes talking about Islam, talking about Christianity, talking about uh, the Hebrew and so on. <laughs> That we should never listen to anything this guy says yeah. ever again. And keep in mind, you Muslims who are watching, this is, am I wrong, AP? Or is this the guy who says, 
if you just go with the Quran, if you just read the Quran, you'll get the impression, you'll get the impression that it allows an extreme form of pedophilia. And that the impression you'd get is that it's halal to have sex with a five-year-old. Am I making that up or is, or is that exactly what he said? Is this that guy? Um, if you look, I mean, let's verify. Oh. <laughs> let's verify quickly. Wait a minute. Just at the Quran, you will get the indication that you can have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. No. The reason why it's haram to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old is not found in the Quran at all. If you just read the Quran, it is halal. It would just it would be halal to have sexual intercourse with a five-year-old. Chapter sixty-five, verse four. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us who you can divorce and who you cannot divorce. And then he says, And the ones who had never been pubescent before. And by the way, this is very important, yeah? I want all Muslims to be aware of this. The reason why we don't have sexual intercourse with five-year-olds and six-year-olds and seven-year-olds or whatever is not because of puberty. Wait a minute, what did you say? It's not because of puberty, because that verse in the Quran actually says, Lam They never had puberty before. You can't go around that. The Quran doesn't. So, yeah, hey, that's uh, basically uh, one, our one second. Uh, Myrna M -A -M -A -Z says, Look at how they twist his words. What are we twisting? I said that Hijab said that if you just go with the Quran, you would conclude that it promotes an extreme form of pedophilia and that you could have sex with a five year old. AP, is that, is that just me or is that exactly what he said? That's exactly what exactly you said, and that's exactly said. what he said as yeah. well. Yes. And when I made when I made my video about this, I specifically said hijab doesn't believe that pedophilia is okay. And you can see right there, he's just saying it has nothing to do with the Quran, right? Yeah. So he believes you have to go outside the Quran to other sources to conclude that you can't have sex with a five-year-old. Our point here, our point in quoting these kinds of things is that hijab admits that if you just go with the quran allah's perfectly clear speech you'd get the impression that you can have sex with a five-year-old it's exactly what he says he says it over and over and over again in the clip and his followers have been trained to say you see they're they're twisting his words what words do we twist you want to you want to watch it over like nine times in a row so you can Pe tell us what we're twisting here people said the same thing to me like oh you're taking this out of context he he was actually talking about going only with the quran what am i you're taking right. out of context right i'm i'm posting the clip, the in, the clip in the clip that i posted he says <laughs> twice that if you only look at the quran if you just look at the quran that he will come to this conclusion i didn't even cut anything out it's right there the context is right there it's not like i'm cutting anything out or twisting anything we are just saying hey muhammad hijab says if you read the quran you will come to the conclusion without any other sources you will come to the conclusion that you can have sex with a, a prepubescent five-year-old child that is what we claim and that is what we verify by look, looking at the evidence here and 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 by the by the way ap you can you can make things much 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 worse for our good friend muhammad hijab here because you can use this to refute uh, and expose his claim that they don't worship Muhammad, which we talked about last time because he uh, said that, uh, you know, Ayan Hirsi Ali is wrong because she says they worship Muhammad. When according to Muhammad's definition of worship, keep in mind, Mah uh, Allah in the Quran, in the Quran, in the verses that we just read, said that Jews and Christians take our, uh, our rabbis and priests as lords. One of his companions objected and said, "What they they don't they don't worship their their priests and rabbis." And Muhammad responded and said, "No, when they listen to a human being who can overrule what is halal according to God, they're taking them as a as lords." Well, what did Hijab just do? Hey, if you just look at the Quran, it's halal to have sex with a five-year-old, but because of Muhammad, we say it's not halal. Now, what's he saying? God, what God says would allow you and make halal an extreme form of pedophilia, sex with five-year-olds, but that's why we don't go with that. We go with Muhammad. And according to Muhammad's definition of worship, that is worshiping Muhammad. So you can make a video titled Muhammad Hijab Worships Muhammad and put those together yeah, and it's yeah. a slam dunk case. 
on top of that, the claim that if you go outside of the Quran and you listen to Muhammad, you will conclude that you cannot have sex with prepubescent children is not even true. That's not that's completely uh, unfounded. What you would need uh, additionally for that is to look at uh, scholarly interpretations that are outside of the Quran and outside of the Hadith. So uh, if you look at the primary two sources of Islam mm -hmm. uh, and, and the, the, the remaining ones outside of that are debatable, then you can, can come to the conclusion that you can have sex with and marry any child of any age mm -hmm. yeah that's the quran that's islam for you what yep. a religion yep what a religion all right I differentiate between the book an eight-year-old can do that this individual if we listen <laughs> and we to can marry that eight-year-old <laughs> <inspired laughs> <children>, like <laughs> anders Berwick, and who mentions her by name <laughs> then we will get a distorted understanding of what islam says clearly Islam is against. That's a lie, by the way. I actually did not inspire uh, terrorists. Yeah, we, we talked about that we last time. About that. Ridiculous. Certain types of violence, and when it does call for violence or allows violence, it does so in very restricted conditions, and it must be done so with the hierarchy like and the unbelief. <laughs> yeah, you you mean restricted conditions like uh, propagating Islam to your disbelieving neighbors and then fighting them if they yeah. if they reject it. And even is, is even, that your restricted conditions? Yeah, even Surah nine verse twenty nine: "Fight those who do not believe in Allah." So not believing in Allah, uh, nor the last day, nor holding that forbidden which uh, which Allah has forbidden right so if you don't if you don't forbid the exact same things that Islam forbids that's a justification for fighting you and then if you look at what Muhammad said I've been commanded to fight people until they say there's no God but Allah and that Muhammad is his messenger and they establish prayer and pay zakat and so it's like hey you do all the things that Islam tells you to do or we're coming to fight you and so yes there are these conditions yeah don't believe <laughs> Don't do everything correctly, and they're coming to fight you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Muhammad said that he has been sent to fight the people until they believe that Allah, that there's only one God, Allah, and that He is Allah's messenger. But yeah, it's just to, it's it's just only very restricted conditions, according to Muhammad Hijab. And of course, he is right. Who are we to question his words? Mm -hmm. All these kind of things. And if this is something that someone doesn't believe, all someone has to do is go to the centers of Islamic power. Azhar, uh, Medina University, Dioband, and so on. These places, Nadwatul Ulama, these big universities, which are the equivalent of the Oxford and Cambridge of the Islamic world, <laughs> which scholar believes in what she, this woman is saying this? A lot, uh, number one. Second, uh, this, this, those, those are not the equivalent of these universities. Uh, and number three, I'm really wondering why the supposedly self-proclaimed traditionalist Muhammad Hijab refers to uh, such schools. Uh, others like uh, Sajid Lipham, traditionalists, would shame him for referencing those schools as a proper authority. Um, yeah, and I mean, I mean, when I talk about what Islam teaches, I go to Allah and Muhammad. <laughs> yeah, you don't go to a, we, we don't go to universities and ask them. Yeah. This miserable liar. No one believes in what this this right wing, far right narrative <coughs> from the Muslim world. This alt right, <laughs> this alt right Trump supporter here that no one should listen to. <laughs> yeah, the alt right Muhammad. Nobody believes the alt right Prophet Muhammad. The far right alt right uh, white supremacist this Prophet white Muhammad. <laughs> It's only faction groups and uh, ridiculous people who have political uh, agendas. And that, unfortunately, is Islamic terrorists and also right-wing terrorist influences like Magan. Wait a minute. That was, that was good. He actually said the words. Unfortunately, it's Islamic terrorists and also right-wing terrorist influences like Magan. No, I appreciate it. He's admitting yeah, that. Unfortunately, it's Islamic terrorists and also right-wing who have political uh, agendas. And that, unfortunately, is Islamic terrorists and also right-wing terrorist influences Good. like Magan. Very nice. Do you think democracy, democracy is uh, compatible? Like, is there a way? Oh, so I was in um, I was in Dubai last year, and Dubai's gotten, at least from my perspective, just having gotten there, has gotten a lot less strict than it was. And you can go to some areas, and you can see. Oh, <laughs> Ahmed S said uh, in a super chat, I could not watch Muhammad Hijab without thinking of golden showers. The two, th the two things have now become synonymous. This golden shower is a token of my appreciation. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate your, uh, your nice gift. 
And I would I would like to say this is uh, David's fault because he keeps bringing up golden showers uh, in relation to Mohammed Hijab. But unfortunately, well, he said it like 180 times in that yeah. <laughs> during that live stream. <laughs> It's not our fault at all, right? This comes directly from the great Muslim apologist, the honorable Muslim apologist Muhammad Hijab himself. Golden I know, and, and 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 if and and according to Hijab, if he doesn't know that that's inappropriate behavior, then you should never trust anything he says about morality ever again. That's yes. the, the the methodology he's applying to Ayan Hirsi Ali here, and therefore he must be right with his talk of golden showers. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So don't do golden showers. Oh, this is much more, I don't know if conservative is the right word to use, but it's just much different. And then there are areas where it's like, oh no, this is where tourists are. And now it's allowed to be more liberal. Um, do you think there's a way for Islam to adapt to the modern world? Well, first of all, what we're seeing is Muslims adapting to the modern world. Muslims are voting with their feet. They're coming to Europe, they're coming to America. They love the rule of law. They love freedom. They, they, they want to take the opportunity that uh, countries that are democracies provide. And in that sense, I would say Muslims are totally compatible with democracy because they desire it like all other human beings. The body of Sharia law or Islamic law is incompatible with democracy. The reason is because the principle of that body of law is that God is the lawgiver. And if God is the lawgiver, then a, belie a, Muslim believer, a believing Muslim has to try and, uh, and sink, if you will, <laughs> the thought that God is the lawgiver with a parliament or a congress or people who are elected to take God's position. And so mm. that becomes very, very difficult. And that is why I think up to a point, organizations like Al-Qaeda and ISIS and so on, they were having uh, an easy time recruiting people because they're saying what the Quran says is what we want. This is what the Prophet Muhammad did. You can't have a democracy in Islam because you're turning human beings into lawgivers. That's the greatest possible sin. Uh, mm. You know what's very funny? Um, when I was... a uh, when I grew up in my um, religious Islamic uh, environment, to, to, to be fair, uh, my environment and my parents and my uh, community was not, um, you know, hyper traditionalist and all that. They were more uh, toward uh, mysticism and and all all kinds of uh, weird stuff, but also very much connected to to Islam's uh, orthodox traditionalist approach. And according to their understanding, in line with uh, Muslim scholars over the centuries, over a th thousand years, uh, we were taught that democracy is wrong. Democracy is basically, uh, is, ba is almost like shirk, you know, like uh, associating partners with Allah, because what we're doing is we are replacing Allah's perfect law, which he commanded us to keep in the Quran, with human law, which is flawed, and we are basically claiming that we are better than Allah, because we are establishing a system where we abandon his laws and follow our own laws and we were supposed to reject that and only adopt the islamic uh you know way of living and the islamic way of thinking and this is the same reasoning that uh, islamist organizations islamist governments uh islamist groups and movements across the world take including uh with these islamic dawah people many of which we see online including Muhammad hijab for example he when i asked him said that uh, a majority muslim country should establish an islamic state and in that islamic state people who who um, you know turn away from this Islamic State should be subjected to punishment. That's what he himself also said. So th this is inherent to uh, the Islamic ideology, to the Islamic belief that it is incompatible with uh, freedom, with liberalism, and with democracy. Now, humans, she brought this up, humans, of course, have the desire to be well and to be free. And when they come from the Islamic world, which is very crappy, to the West, they enjoy the freedoms and the, you know, the, the luxuries, the... Uh, 
the, the way everything is so easy, the way life is so easy. They enjoy these things. But on the other hand, they are also constantly fed this whole um, idea that they have to be loyal to Allah and they have to be loyal to their prophet and the Islamic nation and they can't betray this. They have to be loyal to Islam. They have to uphold Islam. And there is a constant conflict going on, this dualistic conflict within the Muslims of enjoying the beautiful free life in the West and at the same time cursing that life and trying to hold on to Islam because deep inside they also think this is their obligation. There is a constant struggle going on. And 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 notice uh, notice why you can't get over that internal struggle as far as as far as democracy being you know a form of idolatry or um, or shirk. Think just think about Muhammad's definition of taking someone else as Lord and worshiping that mere human being as Lord. If you permit something that Allah says is impermissible, or if you don't permit something that Allah says is permissible, then you're actually worshiping that person. And so if Allah says you can't eat pork and your government says you can, then your government is allowing something that Allah has forbidden and you're, you're, you're guilty of shirk. And so, yes, you have, you have individuals who haven't thought through all this. Yes, I love, uh, man, life is so much better here in, in the United States and Canada and the UK and France and so on. Man, we love it here. We can, we can thrive and flourish here. Um, that's that's why at the end of the day, that's why at the end of the day, uh, once the once the more traditional uh, Muslim comes in, the more traditional speaker Muslim speaker comes in there and says, uh, "Do you realize what you're doing? Do you realize what's going on here? I'm going to guide you through this." And that's why it's so easy to radicalize their teenage sons and get them to go join ISIS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, this this is actually the precise logic that. Um that I learned and that my parents are also uh, subjected by and that they still uh, hold. Uh, we, we were in Germany. We lived there. I know for a fact uh, from their life experiences, from our life experiences, from our reactions to everything that happened in our lives, that life was comfortable in Germany. Life was good in Germany. No, it, was, it was good. It was easy. It was easy to, to live there and to exist there. It was so much uh, less stressful. It was great. It was fantastic. But according to my parents, we were not supposed to stay to stay there uh, naturally if we have a better place to live, which is more Islamic, because we were basically living in the in the lands of, of disbelief, of war. This is the, the place that you are supposed to live if you are uh, if you are fleeing from something. You're not supposed to find comfort here. Then in Turkey, it is again the situation that Turkey is a secular country. It's not Islamic. So the hope is that that will also soon turn into an Islamic country, because if you have a secular government, then exactly as you just uh, said it, the idea is um, if Allah tells us what is right and what is wrong, and he tells us to precisely follow that and to be loyal to that and never to take any other authority over Allah, then how can you possibly approve of a government uh, which bans things that are allowed in Islam and which forbids things that are uh, permitted in Islam or commanded in Islam? Thereby, you are basically uh, committing idolatry and rebelling against uh, Allah. What you have to do is to reach to your nature, which Allah gave you, and establish this Islamic authority and follow only him. And the Islamic authority, as we have seen, is the one which... I'm sorry, hates everybody else and commands violence and intolerance and subjugation. That's the plain truth of it. Like we don't kill old people, AP. So ha ha. Yeah, we don't kill old people and we don't kill children. Yes. So that's why we are peaceful. <laughs> and so I think if you approach it from, you know, the perspective of the scriptural framework, then those two legal frameworks, Islamic Sharia law, with the basic tenets of a democracy, that's incompatible. But Muslims, millions and millions of Muslims would love to live in a democracy. Okay, that makes sense. That's interesting because in, in Christianity it says, um, I'm gonna butcher this too, but respect authority, right? That's part of it. So if you have lawgivers or people in institutions or kings, it says that respect them, right? right. Yeah, interesting. But I think because in Christianity, the separation is accepted. 
the church is not the lawgiver, the Pope is not the lawgiver, Jesus Christ is not seen as the lawgiver, and other, you know, Christian scholars and theologians were not seen as lawgivers. They may have adopted those positions. They may have assumed those positions, but the separation is very clear. And I think that was, that is probably why, um, you know, democracies and republics emerged out of Christian culture and why it's a huge struggle for something like that to happen within Islamic culture. Okay. Is democracy compatible? Okay. Um, I know you will disagree with me slightly. I will say that uh, I will disagree a little bit with Ayan. Well, I, I guess she actually, to be fair, she pointed out that uh, that Christian scholars and authorities assumed those positions and then mm-hmm. uh, basically established this uh, Christian authority. Insofar, that is true. I, I would say, I would definitely say it is true. Um, I agree with the idea that Christianity or a Christian society made it much more likely to bring forth ideas like you know equality and uh, freedom and uh, you know democracy and uh, separation of uh, you know of of church and government and all that. It was much more possible to emerge within a Christian society than in an Islamic society because uh, Islam is outright against those things as we have just explained. I guess I don't know where I was going to object. I think I'm very much in agreement with that. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. You just have to clarify if you say you know Jesus isn't the lawgiver or something like that. God is like the ultimate lawgiver of the, yeah. the moral law and so on. Um, but as far as like earthly governments and and kingdoms, um, I mean. You know, Nero's the king when when Paul's writing, and he's saying respect authorities, and you know, you 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 pray for people, and you pray for the king, and stuff like that. And you have to respect authority because, um, you know, they're there to punish wrongdoers and so on. And so, and and even I mean, you talk about the the separation of of church and state. Uh, you know, Jesus is the one who said, "Render to Caesar what is Caesar, and to God what is God's." Mm-hmm. And so you can you can have a kind of <coughs> You can have a kind of dual obligation where you are supposed to respect your, you know, kings in this world and pay taxes and things like that. You also have your your obligations to God. And as long as they're not in conflict, which they can be, and if they are in conflict, then you get into a different then you get into a different situation. If you're if your you know earthly government says um, you know what? We're going to round up all Jews and, and slaughter them. Then you're supposed to say, "Oh, nah, actually, no, I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that." Um, but generally, governments don't make you do stuff like that. So generally, there's not a conflict um, between how you would live as a Christian and with your Christian friends and in your Christian community and what what a government is telling. The problems arise, you know, with communist governments or, sad to say, in Islamic governments, where now, hey, you're supposed to preach the gospel and things like that, and we're going to we're gonna crush you for those kinds of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so, some Muslims will raise the idea that uh, in Islam, there is also this concept that you are supposed to uh, respect the authorities, or you're supposed to respect your ruler. But uh, we're not talking about the same thing. In Islam, the concept is that you are supposed to uh, have a Muslim ruler an islamic rule of law and then you are supposed to respect that ruler no matter what unless he uh you know clearly goes against islam whereupon you are supposed to correct him but in islam it's also the fact that you are supposed to spread islam within a society and as soon as you have uh, the means you are supposed to establish an islamic state an islamic rule and muhammad hijab himself here during uh his conversation with me agreed to that you know so there is that with Islam. So democracy is used by all those who use it, or I'll say all, maybe uh, I'll say with, for most of those who use it, instrumentally. A communist, a socialist who uses democracy to vote in a communist party, does so because not because they want to see democracy enacted necessarily, but because they want to see communism enacted. So in the same, or by the same token, those who use democracy from, let's say, the Muslim uh, sphere in Muslim countries to implement Sharia, they do so instrumentally as well, in the same way as someone would use it to put socialism or communism. So once again, there's nothing peculiar. There's nothing, remar- it's unremarkable, the Islamic use of democracy compared to other ideologies. That's the first thing I'll say. The second thing I'll say is, even Christians, for example, in America, they use democracy in this way. Uh, for example, conservative Christians. Sometimes there have been, as you know, referendums and other things for gay rights. Christians will, although they might not mention this, they will vote against uh, gay marriage, for example, or against abortion, for example. 
Okay. And they'll do so using democracy. So they're trying to implement Christian values through democracy. In the same kind of way, Muslim people may use democracy to put the same kind of values in this case, you know, the family values or something like that. So yes, but however, what we don't believe in definitely is that the majority of people are speaking the objective truth at all times. I mean, just because the majority of people voted for something, it doesn't mean that thing is true. Plato made this uh, this assessment of democracy a long time ago when he said that it's it's not for the ignorant ones, like you know, to 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 talk about things which they're not specialized in. Just because the majority of people think that the earth is flat, it doesn't mean that the earth is flat. And that was the status quo in the world's history before. People thought the world was flat. So just because the majority of people say something, it doesn't mean that's the objective truth. So we will say the same thing. We believe the objective truth, the objective truth is that which the all-knowing, the all-wise says, which is in the Quran and the Sunnah. And we have evidences for that. We believe in that. We can prove that. Um, however, uh, democracy is used instrumentally. Now, um, David. What's up? Do you, are you with me here? Or uh, do you want to add something to it? No. I, f I think he's mostly technically correct, but this was not the question. Um, the question was whether Islam is compatible, compatible with yeah. democracy, right? That was the question. Yeah. And, and now, wh whether he says that uh, demo democracy can be instrumentally used, but just because the majority agrees to something, that doesn't mean that uh, what they agree to is objectively true to us. That doesn't really answer the question whether democracy is compatible with us. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. I mean, it, it, and if, in fact, I think he let the cat out of the bag. Uh, democracy is something we will use <laughs> to get what we actually want, which will yeah. be the implementation of Sharia. So we'll, we'll use it. We'll, we'll, we'll play along for a while until we can, uh, until we can actually get what we want. Um, but you know, you know, notice, notice, I mean, a lot of what he's saying is correct. I mean, Plato wasn't crazy about democracy. I mean, democracy killed Socrates. And so just because the majority in the court uh, approved of Socrates' death, that doesn't mean that it's right. And so there, there's there's an issue with the idea. Um, I think it was I think it was Churchill who said democracy. But so this is the response to hijab. I think it was Churchill who said that democracy is the worst form of government except for all the others. And so the, yeah. the idea, the idea of a democracy is, yeah, you can have most people getting, getting, you know, getting something wrong. But if, if one guy's in power, or small groups in power, it's, it seems really likely that if, if, you know, one guy's in power, then his son takes over, then his son takes over. Eventually you're going to get to someone who's really, really wrong. And then there's just no check on his uh, power. And by the way, that's, um, that's why that was something that the founding fathers in the U.S. were acutely aware of. They, they referred to the tyranny of the many, that you can actually have a tyranny of the many. And that's why they put, hey, we've got a constitution and we've got these three branches of governments and we have all these different rules for how these different branches of governments um, get into power and how they're put into power and so on. And the idea is that if we make our government like this, and then you've got, of course, people voting, and but it's an electoral college and so on. It's we're going to make it as hard as possible for anyone, including a majority of people, to just boom get a tyranny, right? Because you could have a major a majority right now come up with something crazy. It would be a while. They'd have to keep that up for a long time in order to actually get a, a, a tyranny. So people are aware of it, and yeah, the idea is, well. <laughs> What's the alternative, Islam? Because I'll take democracy. I mean, you, you can implement uh, a, a democratic decision-making process within uh, certain Muslim societies, and the democratic decision-making process will uh, lead to the to, to the conclusion, to the consequence that most of the people agree with. Uh, uh things like that uh people who blaspheme or people who leave islam should be punished with death and that then becomes the you know the the law or the rule whatever it is it's it's just it's it's a to respond to the question is islam compatible with democracy to respond to that with well democracy is uh you know instrumentally used but just because most people agree with something that is not objectively true that is not uh, the objective truth that doesn't mean anything i can say the same thing i think democracy is a very good tool i think it can lead to great things i think it should stay it should be used nevertheless i also agree that uh if the majority of, of the population comes to a conclusion that i consider uh 
pretty dumb. I will. I do not consider their conclusion an objective truth. I am still against what they conclude. I but I, but yet I still uh, agree that democracy is uh, useful. That is compatible with my ideas and with my society. That's what he should be answering. Is democracy compatible with his Islamic ideas and religion with his religion or not? Seemingly, he has already given a certain answer here, which is. Uh, just like others use democracy for their own means, we Islamists will also use democracy to get to our means, which means to abolish democracy and to establish uh, our Islamic laws. Yeah. So if he were if he were to just give a concise answer, he would say democracy and Islam are compatible in a very limited, superficial sense in which democracy will serve as our tool to get what we want and and at that point democracy will will be destroyed except for you know limited sense within islam I, I hate to make uh, comparisons to Hitler and the Nazis, but just to give a very familiar example, uh, it is also the idea that that Hitler, for example, made use of uh, democracy and a democratic process uh, in order to, uh, you know, acquire much of his power. Uh, despite the fact that he was inherently against democracy and as a result of that also abolished democracy. So he used it as a means to achieve his his, his goals. In the same sense, uh, Islam could also, or Muhammad's idea, Muhammad Hijab's ideology here could also make use of uh, democracy only in that sense, only in the sense that it is a, a, a tool, a horse that you ride to get to your Islamic supremacy where you then start oppressing everyone who disagrees with you. Yeah. Uh, and if we're talking about in the Western world, then of course it, it's used in the same way. But in, in terms of the Muslim world, once again, it's, it's used instrumentally. It's compatible from that perspective, not from the perspective that we believe that whatever the majority say is an objective truth, uh, which is in any way com competitive no believes that. with the Islamic discourse or the Quran and Sunnah. Absolutely not. Yeah. This is an important one. That's, <laughs> that's such a non answer to the question. It's a, I don't know. Uh, Rashid White made a super chat and said, this is the best bit. Question, can Islam and democracy coexist? His answer, democracy and Islam can coexist until we get power and we will take democracy away. Basically, yeah, basically. And that's concise, that he should have concisely just said that if he was honest. Hakikachu would have said that. <laughs> yeah, Hakikachu would have outright said that. We don't like democracy. We don't want democracy. We will use it to abolish democracy. <laughs> okay. Um and I, I suppose you've been working on this for a good portion of your life, but how do we bring peace for the future, given the fact there are, given the fact Islam is- Given the fact that there are people like Muhammad Hijab. <laughs> I mean, I, I understand the question. It is, you know, between, how do we bring peace between Muslims and non-Muslims? Uh, Jews, Christians, uh, atheists, agnostics. Yeah. Muslims, yeah, who refuse to be Muslim anymore and who are threatened. How is that? I think, number one, uh, and I think it's really key and the most important point is to have honesty. I've seen a lot of exercise in what they call interfaith dialogue, where representatives of the various religions come together and try to figure out how we can coexist with one another peacefully. Mm -hmm. But one of the reasons why I think these exercises fail is because there's a lot of beating about the bush, um, not putting on the table what the key differences are between yeah, these Yeah, they don't want to hurt each other's feelings. And I think once we get to the principles, then you can say, how can we get along and uh, have rules, um, have the enforcement of the rule of law. So if there are Muslim people coming to non-Muslim societies, they have to abide by the values, the norms, the laws of where they come. And those societies have to enforce those laws and norms and values. If they don't, then they're going to be faced with brute force and I don't think that's a good starting point. But so far we've This is so Islamophobic, I can't believe it. Yeah, this is Indeed. the most racist thing I've ever heard in my life. Violent confrontations <laughs> between Muslims and non-Muslims. And the way to resolve that, I think, is by strengthening constitutional democracies to enforce their laws and their norms. I think the fact that life mm. is changing for girls and women in Europe because there are immigrants from Muslim countries who make it, I think that should be unacceptable. Uh, terrorism. I, I'm sorry to say this, but this is very Islamophobic and uh, bigoted and all that. I think as a Western person, it is your responsibility to uh, not prioritize your own values and your own comfort and your own ideas, but to rather um, 
let's say how do you how do you say it nicely bend over backwards and uh to simply you know uh, let uh, others who have their own values and their own culture come and impose whatever ideas they have it is your responsibility as a western person especially if you have white skin uh to to be to say hey my laws don't matter at all your laws matter more come do to me whatever you want to do so uh, yeah, no, be, I, yeah i just want to i just want to point out here um because you'll have hijabs fans who are oh, him so strong him so strong him win him strong than her right whereas everyone else who's watching this is looking at this going look at how calm and reasonable and thoughtful she's being about all of these issues and uh look at the difference between the just the rage of muhammad hijab <laughs> and if you actually know the Muslim sources, you know, he's being in, insanely deceptive in a lot of what he's saying, but uh, just the anger and the hostility and the rage against her. But I mean, just think about this, given hijab's rage and the rage of his fans against Ayan Hirsi Ali, you'd be in the same category, AP, but what would happen if these guys ever got what they wanted? They used democracy, they spread enough to Kia, they got on enough podcasts to spread enough lies, to get enough followers, to actually uh, use democracy to implement Sharia. What in the world? I mean, could you imagine Ayan Hirsi Ali here all of a sudden being surrounded by hijab and a bunch of his followers, or you, AP, being surrounded by hijab and a bunch of his followers, given their level of rage? What would happen? It would be the same thing as her friend, Tail Van Gogh, when he was brutally murdered in the streets. And the insane, the insane irony here is that... <laughs> Since you guys don't want to be in that situation where you're going to be under the control and power of people like Hijab and his followers who want to do some very messed up things to you, since you don't want to be in that situation for your own well-being, you criticize the ideology and then you're a horrible, evil person for not wanting to be brutally murdered in the name of Allah. You're a flawed horrible messed up person for not wanting not wanting to be brutally murdered and ayan hersi ali here she's in a different category she would be she would be repeatedly raped by people who are following the commands of allah then she would be killed um and because she doesn't want to be in that situation she's a horrible evil person I, I, can, I can certainly imagine what Mohammed Hijab uh, would like to think happens when uh people like uh us are surrounded by him and his people uh what he would like uh, to see happen is uh this when these whore islamophobes need to get on their knees in submission before they are whipped by muslims and they reluctantly open their mouth in protestation to find that they have been defiled this is an actual tweet by Mohammed Hijab, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, I did put uh, these red bars on certain words that were only there to uh, fill the tweet to make it look like he's not talking about what he's talking about here. But this is the stuff that Mohammed Hijab fantasizes about when he thinks of Islamophobes. He would like to uh, come together with his fellow uh, wonderful worshippers and force the whore Islamophobes on their knees in, uh, in submission so that uh, he can then um, def defile their protesting mouths while they uh defy him yes so that's it uh nothing more needs to be said this is islamic apologetics ladies and gentlemen yes we are free countries and we don't want to listen in on everyone's conversation we don't want to become police and surveillance states but i think it, it, it there has to be red lines making it very clear what it what is allowed and what's not allowed what's tolerated and what's not tolerated and then if that's enforced i don't know why i'm censoring myself by the way mohammed Hijab basically says that uh whore islamophobes should be gang raped uh, uh and at least orally abused by people like him so, and then yeah. and, and another tweet he says that uh he's uh they basically want it yeah yeah they they, they want it they want it they want a real man like him to come along and uh and 
and rape them. And so that's this. <laughs> these these yeah. are the champions of Islam right here. Look. I believe certain anti-Muslim women. Uh, uh, so Ayan Hirschi they lived Ayan in the Hirschi medieval period. Uh, people like Ayan Hirschi Ali would wish they lived in the medieval period, a period where if a war was won by the opposing side, it was conventional that people could be taken as booty. Some historical accounts actually say some women would dress up for the captor. So it's clear what he's talking about. He's talking about taking them as as sex slaves and he's saying that the women would dress up because they wanted it but the thing is david uh you're not supposed to protest and complain about this this is just his belief he's just being very passionate this is just he's just you're just supposed to understand and tolerate this these are our differences and differences make us better they they enrich us mm -hmm. so just keep that in mind and uh, I on Hersey Ali there, by the way, she's talking about, uh, you know, what do you do about the what do you do about the situation? And uh, I actually think you don't have to do a lot. It's like just stay out of our way. Right. We'll take yeah. care. We'll take care of the problem. We'll yeah. take care of the problem. Stay out of the way. I mean, if you think if you think what we're what we're up against, because we're not just dealing with uh, with the Dalagandists and harassment and threats and stuff like that. It's everyone in any position of authority in the west is is against us right the politicians the politicians are on the side of islam not as far as establishing sharia and stuff like that i mean as opposed they're they're opposed to us exposing all these problems in islam journalists um everyone in the education system everyone in hollywood everyone just how dare you talk about these things oh you're racist if you talk about these things you're a bigot if you talk about these things if those people just shut up and let us do our job the avalanche would occur so fast that you don't have to you don't have to even think about oh we're going to go out and fight and, and 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 have this big war and this big bloodbath between east and west you don't need any of that as soon as i mean if you could just get the get the facts out there i mean ap what i'm talking about is this everything is aligned against us and here we are with a couple of youtube channels and people are leaving islam left and right what would it be like if on tv there were just regular documentaries about changes in the Quran over the years so that people couldn't lie about it or, or, or documentaries about Muhammad and Aisha so that these things just became complete common knowledge. You'd take, you take, you, you would destroy the Dawaganda. You'd destroy it. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Without shedding a drop of blood, mind you. Yes, absolutely. Swiftly and clearly. Um, I think we will have, peace until everybody comes around to thinking um, that uh, they want to live and let live. And when I say everyone, I'm talking about uh, Muslims in particular. Impossible. This isn't recognized as a problem yet. So these women are then making up personal decisions to change their lifestyles so that they're safe in the public space. I, I've talked to women who said, we, we stopped yeah. juggling. Uh, taking the bike, walking their kids in the park. Uh, there are women who, because they can afford it, they've moved from one neighborhood to a different neighborhood. They're doing all of these lifestyle changes because the rule of law is not being enforced. They're not being protected from violence by their own societies. That is now backslide. We're, getting, we're going back in time to a place where women made choices to stay at home, to refrain from working or going out to the pub or going out to you know, with their friends to sports, dances, and so on, because it wasn't safe for them to do. And now you're seeing this sort of thing coming back, and we're tolerating it, we're accepting it, and I think that's wrong. It's terrible for women. Okay, well. I, I completely see why uh, pathetic, uh, ridiculous, laughable, uh, moronic people like Mohammed Hijab get so freaked out by somebody like Ayana Rasiali uh, you know, speaking out, speaking openly and freely, and speaking about these things as they are, without any restraint, without any any fear, without being uh, stopped, they are so freaked out. They are so angered by this, by the fact that a woman, a former Muslim woman, comes here and openly speaks about these things, openly speaks about the change in society due to uh, due to the Islamic religion and Islamic uh, customs and whatever it is. They are so terrified by this that they have to uh, come out and, uh, you know, people like Muhammad Hijab here have to come out and sit here and uh, raise their voices to, to, uh, to act like uh, they are in, in, some, in some position to tell people like Ayahir Ali to shut up, to be quiet, because they just can't take it. 
when you are sitting here in your in your chair trying to act like you are a tough man who can tell somebody else to shut up you are nothing man by your own words you are nothing you are a pathetic weasel by your own words who has to endure uh what is going on who has to endure the fact that people uh can leave your death cult and can speak very openly and freely about their experiences and about what they think society uh, should look like and you can do nothing about it you can only sit here and uh raise your voice and think you're impressing the masses you're impressing the people but you know what you are merely concentrating even more hate against you and people like you by that i mean islamist apologists like you and you deserve that you deserve that you deserve all all the reactions that come to you because you call people cowards you are a coward man you are a coward you try to appear big and try to tell some other women online to shut up to be quiet try to uh you know patronize them you are nothing man. you are nothing you are a parasite who lives off a country and a system and a culture a cultural group that he hates you hate the west you hate the liberal laws you hate democracy you detest it you say it's bad you say it's terrible it's immoral but you are a parasite a parasitic being that lives off these things whilst proving his outlandish idiotic backward barbaric message on here and acting all tough you are not tough man you are you're a take take the mic off me. It, it is uh it is pretty pathetic i mean just think just think about you know from ayan hersi ali's perspective um she's she's talking and writing about her experience as a muslim and then as an apostate and then as a critic of islam and since she's become an apostate and a critic of, of islam islam has had one exactly one way of dealing with her and that's to heap uh, threats and violence and abuse upon her. Uh, and that's it. So her entire life since she left Islam is one big mass of threats, insults, abuse. And here you have Muhammad Hijab. And what's he doing? Well, he's got, I'm going to heap a bunch of abuse on her. I'm going to I'm going to put her in her place and heap a bunch of abuse on her. But it's exactly what you said, right? Uh, in In the Islamic mindset, she is supposed to be silenced. She should not be allowed to go around criticizing Islam, but there is a, a framework that allows her to continue to criticize Islam. And that's why they not only hate her, they hate the entire framework and only want to use it until they can actually overthrow and destroy it. And she's the bad one for not wanting to let them do that, yeah, <laughs> to destroy yeah. it all yeah. and, and end her life and she's the she's the bad one i mean this is just insane right i mean obviously if someone's going to come and rape and kill you you should say oh well if that's what your ideology promotes i don't like your ideology i'm against your ideology you're against your ideology you're against your own rape and brutal beheading how dare you you evil evil obsequious <laughs> ultra crepidarian I mean, here, here you have an individual, here you have a person like I know Ali who has suffered, who has suffered for so many years. Despite all that, she uh, she doesn't goes seem to angry. different she, different she doesn't nations. Seem angry. She, yeah, she, she is very calm right? and collected. And I mean, she, she is the person we talked about this last time. The person that she worked with and made a film together with. He was brutally killed in the middle of the Netherlands on an open street. He was murdered by the Islamic ideology, by defenders of the Islamic ideology. And she was threatened as well, together with that. It, it could have been her. It could have been her. She was in immediate have, danger. Somebody in this country living like a parasite, like Mohammed Hijab, in this country murdered that guy, Theo Van Gogh, because of a movie. And Ayan Hirsi Ali, despite that, is still fearless, strong, comes out here and still speaks against the suffering that she herself experienced, that others experienced. And what do these imbeciles like Muhammad Hijab do? They sit down and they think, oh, what should we do? We should just sit down and attack her more and more and more. We should insult her. We should go after her personally. We should call her a whore. We should call her this and that. That's what they do. And, and what does the public uh, perceive that like? What is the what is the public reaction to that? I mean, seriously, do you guys really think you islamist morons do you guys really think you are making yourself and your islamic religion your intellectually impotent islamic religion a great service here 
really, this is actually a good thing. I mean, it's it's great that he used the word impotent by mistake. <clears throat> you, all you can do as an Islamist, as a Muslim apologist, is because your religion is so intellectually impotent, because your religion, your ideology is so weak, so absolutely stupid, unbelievably idiotic, because it came out of the tiny little mind of a primitive being in the underdeveloped 7th century Arabia, where people were afraid of jinns in the desert. That's what you have, which is why you don't have anything useful to offer. So you come here and attack people personally and yell at them and try to call them out and think you're doing actually a great heroic act. You're not a hero. You are a parasite, a bug you are an idiot a complete bastard i mean seriously man seriously why do we sit here why do why do people sit here and, and just and just and, and just let this happen why do we why do we have to be the ones who are calm and reasonable and all that why are these barbarians come here with their small minds and yell at us and try to be loud thinking they're actually doing something you are nothing you have nothing in your heads your religion your ideology stinks it is stupid nobody buys it nobody will buy it whenever you try to represent it you make people feel even more disgusted about it and Please go ahead, do that even more. Do us all a service. Fantastic job. Fantastic job. You sound a little uh angry there, AP. But, oh no, uh, not at all. But in, in 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 the midst of all that uh horrible racist ranting, um the the the, the important takeaway there, right, is notice someone like a job. All right, there, there are these two, there are these two sides, and they're opposed to each other. And we look at Ayan Hirsi Ali, and she's opposed to the other side, but she's just, hey, here, here's here's my views. And you've got hijab on the other side, and they're enraged. They're just enraged that people don't just like just keep their mouths shut and keep quiet about all of the horrible things within his religion. And you're just expected to keep your mouth shut. And if you don't, we're just gonna heap insults and abuse on you. And it's like you're right. What why? Why in this disagreement do we have to keep our mouths shut and you just do whatever you want? And no matter how horrible your behavior is or how horrible your profit is or how disgusting your book is, we all just have to keep keep quiet about it or you're going to insult us with uh, with a thesaurus. Um, <laughs> it's, it's very I mean, it's 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 very strange. Right. I mean, I mean. Over the years, David, we're, the messages I get, David, we're going to kill you. We're going to we're going to rape your wife and then kill her. We're going to kill your mother, rape your mother, and kill your kids and all this. And, and it's just constant bombardment. And then even for the people who aren't threatening to kill me, like 98, 99% of the messages I get are just insults. Um, and it's like, but in spite of all that, respect our religion. Respect our prophet who who encourages us to behave like this, and it's like you say, no, I'm not going to respect your prophet who it's encourages you to religion. act like this. I'm not going to respect your book, um, and oh, you're a horrible, evil person, and therefore this this is why we have to we have to kill you. And it's like they they can't get their minds around something like, wait a minute, everything you're saying about what you want to do in this world is absolutely abhorrent to me, and therefore I'm going to speak against it, and they they can't they can't live with it. It's weird, yeah. weird stuff. Live with it. Get used to it. Get used to it. Get used to it. Seriously. Doesn't recognize that as a problem yet. So these women are then making a personal decisions okay. and forced. They're not being protected from violence by their own societies. That is now backslide. We're getting, we're going back in time. So okay. Well, those are my questions. That's a scary place to to leave, but. Those were my questions. Um, Ayan, thank you so much for coming on. And before you go, can you tell people where to find you, where to find your books? I'm going to link your books below too and show notes for anybody who's interested in reading them. Well, my latest book is Pray, uh, Islam, Immigration, and the Erosion of the Rights of Women. And it's in bookstores. It's on Amazon. Um, if you're interested in my views on Islam and whether it can be modified, reformed, I've written a book called Heretic. It's also on Amazon. Um, and then my life story, Infidel, uh, and, and, and that that life story is really sort of the backdrop of how I come uh, to adopt the views uh, that I now have. Um, so, Michaela, thank you very, very much for having me on. And once again, I apologize for my tardiness. Oh, don't worry about it at all. That was great. Thank you so much. I'm just glad I got the opportunity to speak to you. So, so th th thanks again. Thanks again.
Thank you. Thank you very much. How do we bring peace to the future? So how, how do we either like coexist or get along with all by getting rid of your ideology, all these different, uh, different arguments and different religions that we have nowadays? Well, look, Michaela, the, the thing is, the first thing we need to do is we need to eliminate aspects of the discourse which are clearly insightful. Such as your religion. Yeah, like everything he says all day. Cultural. Yeah, get rid of your religion. That's that's the solution then. Here, perfect the advice. The first thing we need to do is everyone needs to mindlessly agree with everything my 7th century literate caravan robbing prophet said. And if we all just do that, then there wouldn't be any problems, except for anyone who disagrees with anything that he said, which because of all the confusion in the sources is why we have so much fighting uh, among Muslims. But if everyone became a Muslim, then of course, it wouldn't be any fighting with, with non-Muslims. We'd just all be killing each other as Muslims. Because we all know that our religion is peaceful and our religion is amazing and brings peace and provides all the good stuff. And all those who disagree with us are actually, you know, th they are hateful. They are bigoted. They are, they, are not, they are not tolerant at all, which is why we need to get rid of all of them to bring only our system which will bring peace this is the solution man fantastic idea this uh and uh blocking free speech or anything. i'm not even mentioning that i'm saying through academic rigor through fact checking so when someone like ayn mcgann mentions all the things that she mentions about islam and she is not qualified no one when they when they put her up okay uh, for for interviews like these says let's vet you let's see what qualifications of islam you have being an ex-muslim is not a qualification of islam it's not a qualification of islam just like yeah, being okay. an not a qualification. So first thing we need to do is we need to take information from right people, for people that are actually vetted. I'm not saying like me. It has to be me. I'm not saying it has to be any Muslim. <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> yeah, you are. You liar. That's precisely what you're doing. <laughs> in fact, there are very many non-Muslim scholars of Islam. People like that are mentioned by Magan herself, Ayn Magan, which means refugee in the Somali language. Why does he have to do this, man? I mean, you, your name is Muhammad Hijab or something like that officially. Why do you have to? Why do you have to uh, attack somebody for? To, to remind of our humble beginnings. He can't help him. Um, that, and of course it's ironic because she's now against refugees. Sure. <laughs> like Karen Armstrong, that are scholars of Islam and have a completely different interpretation. Yeah, you mean people who give a very mild yeah. interpretation of Islam. Yeah, Islam is the best thing in the world. Yeah. your ideas and present them as they are. Yeah, like Karen Armstrong, who, who just uh, take Islamic sources at face value and try their best not to judge Islam oh, let, at let, all. And let me guess, uh, John Esposito. Of Islam. So why is it the case that we are... He should have mentioned more. He would have definitely listed that next. Yeah. ...fixated on listening to the conspiratorial nonsense academics of people like McGann and having her on our shows. She has no background in the religion. She doesn't even know what's in the Quran and the Sunnah. So that's the first thing. We, what the first thing we need to do is eliminate nonsense people from the discourse, not through a culture of censoriousness and censoring, no, through academic fact-checking. And it is incumbent... It's very funny of him to say he actually... Uh, did, didn't he start a whole campaign to get rid of us, to, of you yeah. and me? He incited all his followers to report mm -hmm. us and to mm -hmm. take our pages down. He actually did start that. Yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. This is not something we're making up. He actually did start that. And you YouTube uh, actually took his video down because it was uh, targeted yeah. as harassment. And, and and the third thing we need, the third thing we need, moreover, is golden showers. We need the golden <laughs> showers because that has to be part of our discourse. We need the golden showers. We need more threats of rape uh, on women who disagree with us. We need more threats of rape. And and it, this isn't a problem because they, they want it. Deep down, they, 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 they want it. Uh, I know they do. So <laughs> golden showers, anyway, uh, going through my points again, golden showers, <laughs> rape, and they want it anyway. This is how we need to move forward. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is. Oh, no. Seriously, man, I want I want Muhammad Hijab to appear uh, on on some mainstream news channels and to have conversations with people there. I would have I would have this guy on all day, every day. <laughs> <laughs> people like you. I, people, I would, I would, Muhammad you. Hijab, twenty four seven news channel, just yeah. just constant interviews with Hijab. I think they should invite him on Fox News. What, what wasn't one of those? Uh, uh, Anjum Anjum Shaudhry or whatever his name is, he was uh, I think invited to Fox News well uh, once, and uh, they asked him about uh, his opinions on certain things, and it, it was it was a, it was beautiful to see. Yeah, uh, uh, all you listen, all you Muslims out there, if you want to know what really scares us, we don't want you guys contacting CNN and Fox News and all the news channels. <laughs> and demanding and begging them to get Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa and Daniel Hakikachu on their news programs for interviews about Islam. We, we, we that would that would that terrifies us. I won't be able to sleep at night even thinking about you getting all these guys on a bunch more uh, uh, popular interviews. I, I mean I I would be absolutely terrified. So so don't do that please. I mean 
yeah, we're yeah. begging you. Yes, yes, yes. What David is trying to say, dear Muslim viewers, is please, Muhammad Hijab himself might be a little bit too shy to ask for something so huge because he already begged everyone to spam Jordan Peterson and Michaela Peterson to host him. But we tell you, please, maybe you have never thought about this, but it will be a great idea if you all contact uh, some major platforms like CNN or Fox, for example, and tell them to invite Mohammed Hijab. Tell them to invite him as an authority, as a speaker. Tell them to invite him to comment on his current matters from an Islamic point of view. Please do it. Please help him. Who speak on these issues uh, to actually fact check these people, to, to vet these people. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, embarrassing to ask her to, to send her qualifications, her training. Why is he, why is he telling Michaela how to run her own show? He's been like, why do you do this? Do this, do this, invite such yeah. people. Let me tell you, <laughs> let me tell you. I mean, it, it, it's just amazing that, I mean, it's just built into the mindset that we're, you know, we're your bosses. We, we control you. We're not, you're not officially our dimmies. You haven't officially signed the contract, but we have to treat everyone like that's the situation already. Yeah, yeah. If you ask me for that, I'll send it to you, no problem. It has to be like that. Because the second thing is, it has to. The second thing is, we need to realize it's not that Islam and Christianity are at war with each other right now. They're not. I mean, it's, it's there's no crusade that's necessarily happening at the moment. If you look at the places where terrorism has happened the most, and if we define terrorism as a state, or sorry, an action which is done for politically or politically motivated action the targeting of civilians, then we as Muslims condemn the terrorist actions. For example, the terrorist actions of Nega, uh, Nega, Hiroshima and Nagasaki and Dresden and Hamburg and that which is happening to the Muslim people now in the Uyghur concentration camp. We condemn all those things, but it's also incumbent upon individuals from the Western discourse who sometimes can be apologists for such things to also condemn those things. Important and I say to you narrative. that it's important for us to realize that Islam and Christianity and Judaism has already coexisted. Historic okay, uh, let me make a, f a quick correction here. I'm sure he is very much aware of that. But the last time that Islam as a major world force was at war with Christianity was uh, a century ago. And it was at war with Christianity since the time it came into existence until that moment, until a hundred years ago. And then it only stopped because Islam was beaten by the West. So if Islam is currently not at war with Christianity, if Christianity and Islam are currently not at war, that is not because Islam doesn't want to be at war. That is because the West overpowered the last Islamic empire and brought it to its knees and created nation states out of that empire. That is why Islam is currently not at war with, with, with Christianity. That yeah, is why. Islam is always expanding and subjugating until you, you stop it. Until yeah. you make until someone until it runs up against something who makes that makes it stop. Yeah. Um, yeah. Historically and contemporaneously, in in Spain there was a convivencia. In in much of the Ottoman Empire there was coexistence. There was why after the Alhambra Declaration in 1492 in Spain the Jewish people migrate to the Ottoman Empire. They did so because they were being destroyed. I studied the Ottoman Empire myself. You know, I actually I actually went to school there. In, in the uh, uh, what what culturally inherited the the Ottoman Empire, and I I looked into the sources myself. I went deeply into studying it myself. I know about the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire was uh, the Ottoman Empire was the empire which it, which had an had an entire army made up of uh, the children uh, of disbelievers that were subjects of the Ottoman Empire, taken from the disbelievers at a young age converted to Islam, raised as Muslims and as loyal uh, fighters in the Ottoman army. And it, this was like, fight. Mm -hmm. yeah, this was like duty of the of the non-Muslim subjects to, to give their children to the Ottoman Empire and to turn them into Muslims so they can form an army, so that they can uh, at least be of use in a, in, a, in a certain way. It was the Ottoman Empire which enslaved populations across the world. It was the Ottoman Empire which had the aim, the very well-known official aim, to conquer whatever it can in the name of Islam in order to bring the the flag of the Ottoman Empire the flag of Islam to the entire world it was the Ottoman Empire which had Islamic laws it was the Ottoman Empire which uh, considered other people as lesser people and so on Shh, stop telling stories man. destroyed by Christians killed by them uh, for forcibly converted by them these things are clarified in the historical record and consensually understood by every historian worth his salt 
So we have to understand history to realize that it's not been a case of it's bleak and there's always been conflict. And I'm not saying also that it's always been um, sunshine and rainbows, Michaela. I know there have been times, there hasn't been? There have been oh. other campaigns and so on, which has been negative. And what we're seeing now, the Iraq war, the so-called war on terror, terror and so on. These are negative aspects. But that's not all that's happened in 1,400 years of history. So knowing our history, number two. So number one, we said, to eliminate individuals who are unqualified, ultra crepidarians, academic charlatans, like McGann, the miserable specimen from the discourse, not through censoriousness, but through fact checking. Number two is to know the historical record quite well. Number three is to collect our sources from reputable sources and actually do the research. And finally, to realize that if you just travel, I, I honestly give this advice go and travel, go to Ghana, go to Nigeria. This is a country with 50% Muslims and 50% Christian. Go to countries where there's a lot of Christians, a lot of Muslims, and you realize that people are already getting along. People go to Saudi Arabia. Go, go, to, go to the Boko Haram area of Nigeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to Pakistan and express your opinions freely. Yes. Go to Saudi Arabia and live your, try to live your Western life. Since, <laughs> since it's hey, also expected hey. that people, uh, that you live, live people live, uh, let people live their culture and their lives here hey. in your Western countries, go to Saudi Arabia and try to live your life there and yeah, see what happens. Yeah, here, here's, here's the job. And I, I encourage, I really do. I, I really do encourage the apostate prophet and, and uh, Ayan Hirsi Ali to, uh, to go to Saudi Arabia and walk around and share their views, and they'll see how how wonderful everything is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let's let's go together to Afghanistan, for example. Let me go to Afghanistan and see how how wonderful, how beautiful it actually mm -hmm. is there. Let you me just will be, feel you will be and see how as safe as hijab is here in the West. <laughs> People are getting married. Muslims and Christians are getting married easily. It's, it's, it's not something which is a taboo in many other uh, world. Uh, you know, and so, so this is it's not a case of this didactic representation, this dualism, this binary that she's created, which is a fascistic remnant uh, of something that uh, mostly Oswald or uh, even um, Adolf Hitler would say. Shut up, man. Shut up, man. I mean, don't make comparisons to other authoritarian people. You come from your, from your religion, from your Islamic religion, whose prophet says, I will expel the Christians and Jews and live none other than Muslims in the Arabian Peninsula. That is, those are the words of your holy prophet, guided by Allah, your perfect moral example. He said, I will expel the Christians and Jews from the Arabian Peninsula and only leave um, uh, Muslims there. That's what he said. This is your prophet. That's not Hitler. That's not Mussolini. That's not Stalin. That's not all the other people. That is your holy prophet, your barbarian holy prophet. It is your prophet which commanded you to fight, to fight those who don't believe and to subjugate them and to enslave them. It is your holy prophet who had slaves, who, who bought slaves, who sold slaves. It is your holy prophet who in his last moments before his breath cursed the Christians and the Jews. It is your holy prophet who said that you are supposed to treat the Christians and Jews unequally and push them to the sides of the street. It is your religion which established rules that in inspired societies like Nazi Germany of dressing people uh, in certain symbols, in certain colors, so that you can clearly see that this person is a Jew and that person is a Christian, and they are definitely not equal to us glorious Muslims. And if we Muslims come and want to sit down and a Christian is sitting there, then the Christian has the obligation to get up and to leave, and to leave his seat to me, because I'm a Muslim. I'm superior. I am great. I follow the true religion of Islam, and I must impose my Islamic religion because that is what Allah wants in the Quran. That is what my prophet Muhammad told me, commanded me. This is not Hitler. This is Islam. This is Muhammad. So shut up, man. Seriously. You can't take we need to get rid of this kind of discourse because it is causing all kinds of problems. And we must recognize, and I must say this to you, it is a collectivist discourse. Uh, funny enough, it's, it's a collectivist discourse. And already you've said, uh, everybody, you know, your father and, and I and McGann herself has condemned collect it's collectivism because you have an oppressor and you have the oppressed. Who's the oppressor? Oh, it's the Muslim. And who's the oppressor? It's a nonsense narrative, which we, we must realize is not. That is not what collectivism is. He is supposed to be an expert on political uh, science. He doesn't understand anything of it. Nonsense. And so these are the four steps. Number one, to eliminate nonsense from the discourse and education, to edify oneself. Number two, to read the historical record. To, to understand that both historically and contemporaneously that uh, Muslims have gotten a lot. We've heard it three times now. My uh, my uh, advice uh, and conclusion here is uh, get your religion out of places that you don't like. Uh, be quiet and uh, learn to endure people speaking their opinions freely. Shut up. Nobody likes your religion. And rightly so. Yeah. And, That's uh, it. That's my solution. My, yeah. And my advice is uh, if you um, are proclaiming a prophet who calls for the violent subjugation <laughs> of the entire world and calls for the public execution of many of my friends 
and uh, of me, of course, because I criticize it. Um, if you are here promoting a prophet who calls for our, our violent subjugation and our death, then get used to criticism, right? Live with it. <laughs> Live with it. We get to speak. We're not your dimmies. Not your dimmies. I am not, have never been, never will be your dimmy. So get used to criticism. Mohammed Hijab and people like you. You say that I should be punished, possibly executed, publicly executed. Your friend Ali Dawa says I should be publicly executed and he will be happily watching. You say I should be executed and punished simply for being an apostate. Well, don't, right come, on. don't come with, uh, no, it's because you speak about Islam because you openly criticize it. Don't come with that uh, nonsense. It is simply because I left Islam. If somebody leaves Islam, it is, it is, completely natural and normal that this person will also want to express their thoughts and ideas simply for my existence you say publicly that i should be executed that i should be dealt with and that you are proud of that i don't have any respect for your religion and i think that anybody who knows about your religion and who still has respect for it is an idiot I think anybody who still respects your religion, despite knowing these facts, is an idiot. I think people shouldn't be respecting your religion. I certainly don't respect your religion. I don't respect you if your religion causes the first offense of commanding my death. In response to that, I say, screw your religion. I don't care about uh, respecting your religion. I don't care about your feelings. Get rid of your religion and then talk about respect to me. Get rid of that ideology of those rules and then talk to me about respect. I don't have a single, a little bit of respect toward that if you don't have respect for my life. The Quran tells you that you are not supposed to insult that which others worship. Now, I'm an atheist. He says I should kill myself. No, I, I, don't, uh, I, don't, I don't agree with that at all. I'm an atheist. I think the only thing that I have uh, to worship here in life is, uh, is life and love and uh, what I have and people so if, if you want to uh, cause harm to that i'm sorry this is, it is only uh, my natural response if you want to cause harm to what i value which is my life and the world and the lives of others then it is a completely normal response a completely normal reaction of me to say your religion is nonsense it is a pile of crap get rid of it don't come to me with it or at least don't expect my respect because i have no respect at all you don't respect life i don't respect you and your religion that's all there can be to that come on ap tell us what you really think stop holding back because you don't want to hurt muhammad hijab's feelings I would like to say what I really think, but I think it would be very inappropriate. And I want to kind of uh, tone down my language here. That's why um, you only hear the mild version of, uh, of what I really think. Oh, so, no, I, I forgot I wore my Illuminati shirt. <laughs> Whenever I wear this, and uh, I'll wear it in a video and people only see this. And I'll get all these messages. David, what are you, what you've got the, what have you got the pyramid on your shirt? What is Are, are you saying you're, you're with the Illuminati? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Tabasco shirt. Yeah. <laughs> People are stupid. Right. Yeah, I, I have the, the thing here, by the way. The, oh, there you the, go. The symbol of, uh, what's it called in Persian? Far, 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 I don't know. I forgot, the, I forgot the actual word. But it's a Zoroastrian adoption from old uh, Sumerian um, uh, inner spirit and all that some old beliefs it's not like it's not like i religiously value it i just culturally on, value you know it. we're just, in the illuminati I just, I just culturally like it that's all and you know what even this this is like uh they they are they are hateful of this and hateful of everything that is outside their own own uh religion outside their own discourse outside their outside what they can tolerate and they can tolerate only themselves and those who uh accept to be their slaves I, I don't i don't accept slavery i'm not your slave i'm not your dimmy i'm not your i can't even be with me because i'm an opposite i would be outright killed by you immediately no, by that's your why you, that's why you have to be executed well yes, yes. Dawa watches and yes, cheers. yes 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 of course i'm in america i have the means to uh do exactly what i think is best for them uh in my opinion if they uh if they think what's best uh according to them is my execution so uh just don't don't push me but 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 I said, Islam doesn't respect my life. Islam doesn't respect us. Islamists don't respect my life. They don't respect us. Don't expect respect from me. Get rid of your religion and then let's talk about respect. That's all I want to say. And stay away from Islam. Yeah. 
anything else you want to add before we start? No, as, soon, as soon as I hear stay away from Islam, I think we're done. We're not done. We're not even, we haven't even oh. begun. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even begun. Oh, we haven't even begun. Zoinks made a super chat and said, Imam al -Saf Safat. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is back to your job. Imam al Safat. Imam al Safat. Imam al Safat. That's a good one. That looks real. <laughs> Imam al Safat. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, what's funny is that's one of those ones where you wouldn't even notice it on the screen. Yeah. Until uh, until you say, all right, I'm almost so fat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I first didn't get it until I was <laughs> halfway through it. Uh, Oracle of Twilight said, you guys should look at the comments afterwards. We did last time uh, on the comments of the video of uh, Michaela Peterson's podcast. We did last time. Uh, we will talk about all of this again very soon. I have some uh, news and developments about this that I don't want to share at the moment, but I will get back to this uh, soon. <laughs> um just a little hint crispy scn made a super sticker which i cannot see here because i'm using this dumb system but i would have seen it on the youtube uh watch page okay it is, it is a it is a symbol that says ha 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 thank you so much i appreciate it mary rose Fri friday said ascending love from new york thank you for everything you do you have both changed my life with your work and helped me feel better by live streams when lonely community I appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for being here. I really uh, means a lot. I appreciate it. Thank you. David doesn't want to say anything because he doesn't have feelings. Uh, I can pretend. <laughs> just pretend for a second. Come on. <laughs> yeah, me too. I get warm feelings in my heart. <laughs> It's like a chorus of yeah. little birdies in my heart whenever yeah. I get together with Don't everyone hurt else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jason, See, this, way, this is why I keep my mouth shut. I'm not good. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Ingram said, I want to thank you too for giving me all the information you have about Islam. As a pagan, this would have been a bad belief to hold on to. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I appreciate it. Thank you. Jason. Um, Stefan Milojevich said, hey, Stefan, always here. First time in my life I didn't agree with you about something. That was about the situation in Ukraine. Maybe we will agree that we disagree. Just wanted, That's because you are Serbian, Stefan. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy, I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's uh, yeah. No, I it's, I I understand your uh, views on the differences. I just don't want to talk very much about the political stuff on my channel here, but I appreciate you telling me that. Arabian Princess made a super chat that uh, I guess I'm supposed to read, but unfortunately I do not read. Uh, I cannot read it. I can only try. Hey, you're a prophet. You're a prophet. Okay, okay. I <laughs> you can't you're... read. You must be a prophet. Is it about Christianity? Okay, it is. I think. Okay, I get it. <laughs> uh, funny. Somebody should translate. Um, James is tired. Spot on AP. Looking forward to talking to you Tuesday. Oh, yes. I have a debate on James is tired's channel with a Muslim apologist whose channel is known as Finding the Truth. And the topic actually is uh, is Islam true. So that will be a very uh, fantastic conversation. That's good. Respect to the, uh, respect to the uh, Muslim who's going to defend his religion. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, Angel Eyes said, Apostate Prophet Act 17, the wheel are in motion for the end of Islam in the Western world. Have you ever seen such desperation? Desperation has always been part. Violence or desperation. Yes. Uh, there, there, there is a lot of desperation right here. It is funny that he, he goes with angel eyes and that he's got a he's got a angel eyes there. Do yeah. you know that? Do you know that movie, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly? And that's the, that character's I, I named Angel I Eyes. I, oh, okay, yeah. The I character's do. called I Angel Eyes. I've never seen it, but I I, I get the reference. Igono Kuli said, uh, is, this, "Is this Nigerian?" I learned from you both. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you here. Um, Muhammad Abdul said, "David Wood, been his father narrated that apostate prophet." <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, David Wood been his father narrated that apostate prophet once said that the sun doesn't uh, go in a muddy spring and Google knows best. Say so Google one, two, three. <laughs> if we fix that text a little bit, 
that could be a very good hadith. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate that. Um, Emilion Chandra said, thanks, AP and David Wood. Please create more response videos to Farid. I will. I'm just starting. It's very painful, but I'm doing it. Oracle of Twilight said, uh, Muhammad's hijab spent the, ho the whole time attacking Ayan instead of making any real defense of Islam. Shout out to Muhammad hijab for keeping his religion in the darkness for ignorance it's, of ignorance. It's, it's pretty cool. He's got a... Uh... He's got a picture of of me with a magic wand and a bow tie. <laughs> what is that in reference to? He's got a car. I don't know. He's got a cartoon of me and a yeah, magic yeah, wand and a bow tie. Yeah. Keep those holes in the narrative coming. That's fantastic. Uh, Happy Camper said, thanks for speaking up for ex-Muslims AP. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It's the least I can do, and I love doing it, and I like doing it. Tom Tom said, "Sadly, I've seen entire and uh, the people behind the scenes instruct me to do it and give me secret missions and money and all that." Sadly, I've seen many Muslims happy about how hijab acted towards her and towards no, wrong, her. wrong, 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 wrong. You should be happy, and and this is, guys, get your get your mindset for the downfall of Islam. You want. Muslims to be happy about hijab's performance, even as hijab is exposing the true nature of Islam to all the other viewers, right? If his fans are not happy, if they're not happy, then they're not going to be putting him forward, right? And then he, and then we won't have Muhammad hijab out there, right? What this is, and this is why you pick the right people, right? You want the right people for the right job. You want people like hijab out there. You want people like Daniel Hakikachu out there. And then they say that people actually get some reliable information about Islam. And then the their followers are going, Yes, oh, it's so great. And, and everyone else is going, Whoa, what is this? So you want them to be happy. You do not want them going, Oh, no, we, we're. Hijab was so rude to Ayan Hirsi Ali. We can't have we can't put him forward anymore. Well, who are you gonna put forward? Some super nice, respectful guy who doesn't sound anything like what Muhammad taught. Don't no. worry. Right guy for the right job. Hijab is the right guy for the right job. Be happy. Don't worry, be happy. Now. No, um uh, this was of course a very uh uh psychopathic take of uh by david wood <laughs> no no i agree i agree with the general sentiment the thing is um i i completely agree uh, people like muhammad hijab should be out there and they should be representing uh islam and the islamic sentiments uh because that really gives people the right impression about about islam i do really appreciate that one thing that i that i uh would like to see change is the muslim reaction I would, I would love, I would like to see Muslims change and react with more disgust toward stuff that uh, Muhammad Hijab says, for example, or that uh, people like him say. Uh, they yeah, should just, be making the change. Just to be clear, I want that as well, but down the road, right? You want him cheered on. You want him and not just him. We need about seven. We've got four. We've got four in place. We need about three more. We got, and then we'll have seven. And they need to popularize a more accurate picture of Islam to the masses than what people have been getting, you know, 10, 20 years ago when there are all these hand-picked, really nice, really nice westernized Muslims telling people about Islam. You want uh, a particular view of Islam being shown to the world so that the world can react in horror. And you want those people being cheered on by their communities so that the rest of the world goes, Whoa! You mean it's it's not just this guy who's really weird and and angry and violent. It's it's tons and tons of people who think the exact same way and treat him as their <laughs> champion. You want that reaction, and then you want the entire world catching on and going, "No, okay, okay, David, AP, all of you critics, uh, please just just bla just blast this stuff. <laughs> just please, please, we're we're all finally listening now, and." And you've 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 got our full support in crushing this ideology. That's yeah. what you want. And then then you'll have their followers going, wait a minute, this is actually not working out. This is actually bad. Oh my goodness, hijab is actually speeding up the avalanche. You want them to realize it, but only when it's too late. 
which it's already yeah. too late, but you want it to be even more too late. Yeah. There's something nice about the fact that when Muhammad Hijab uh, goes onto a public platform, the uh, non-Muslim reaction is, "Wow, what the hell? What kind of a what kind of a guy is this? What kind of a language is this guy using?" The the Muslim reaction, on the other hand, is, uh, "Thank you for allowing." Uh, traditional Muslims to represent ourselves. Uh, Brother Muhammad Hijab absolutely intellectually decimated uh, the charlatan uh, something with an annihilatory uh, something, something, <laughs> whatever whatever they say. So ridiculously dumb. Uh, <laughs> Muhammad Hijab, he took his thesaurus uh, and smashed her face in <laughs> with his thesaurus. <laughs> Oh, that's the thesaurus. Um, Ahmed S. said we should start a fundraiser to promote Muhammad Hijab. Okay, let's, let's not take it too far. <laughs> Dude, uh, hey, hey, no joke. I've never actually done it, but I have I have thought about what if I what if I don't let them know it's from me and I just you know gave gave, <laughs> gave certain people, certain people some support uh, for Dawah. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. Oh. Maybe, maybe. Uh, I'm lost. Said, what's wrong with your right eye, AP? Are you the Dajjal? Yes, I've, um, I have had this from birth that one one eye is uh, slightly shut in comparison to the other, which is more open, and this is indeed a sign that I am the Dajjal who will I've come at the end. I've never noticed that, but now that you pointed it out, you are the Dajjal. Yeah, pretty much, I am. I don't want. I don't want to say it publicly, but I am the Dutch. Uh, your your secret is safe with me. <laughs> Oracle of Twilight said, "Muhammad Hijab, ex-Muslims can't speak about Muslims, so grape victims can't talk about grape." Yeah, you should just keep it to yourself or face the consequences. That's what he says. Algebra said, "Doubt? What doubt, man? Be a man." <laughs> You are never uh, a Muslim. <laughs> day he wears, <clears throat> the day he wears hijab, I will accept Islam. Uh, BD Animation made a super chat and didn't say nothing. And I'm lost. Said I did a job. We, we already, already wrote that. We already saw that. Okay, this is all. We are okay, now. Now, now we're circling through them over again. No, we are. <laughs> now let's start from the beginning again. Yes, to see if we missed something. Uh, maybe we can think of another response that we just couldn't come up with earlier. Just kidding. Okay. Uh, thanks everybody for being here. Thanks for doing this. I thought we would just go an hour. That is oh, that was our goal today, but unfortunately, this time it didn't work. We went over an hour. Uh, but we wanted to go live again in the next, within the next few days to make another live stream about uh, uh, Bart Ehrman. Um, which will be very interesting. And then we will soon again have another live stream in response to certain Muslim apologists. So we will be here again very, very soon. David? Um, yeah, so AP is going to tell you to stay away from Islam, but don't stay away from Muhammad Hijab and his buddy Ali Dawa because they are gifts. Gifts. Except, except if you are walking outside and you encounter them, then reconsider what David Wood just said. Uh, uh, but that's all there is to say. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Have a fantastic day. Uh, we'll see you again. Thanks, everyone. Uh, and as always, stay away from Islam. Gadget Yo said, when did you guys end it in one hour? Never. But we try our best. Anyway, stay away from Islam.